Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever honed. Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. From Ebbett Field in Brooklyn, Gillette presents the exclusive play-by-play report of the fourth game of the 1949 World Series between the New York Yankees and Brooklyn Dodgers. Good afternoon, baseball fans everywhere. This is Mel Allen with Red Barber greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of world-famous Gillette razors, blades, and shaving creams. Yes, and it's because so many of you fans use these products that Gillette is able to broadcast and telecast major sports events, including the Kentucky Derby, football bowl games, and top-flight boxing attractions for your entertainment. So enjoy the tops in sports by tuning in Gillette's cavalcade of sports the year around. This series, there's a big hand for all these Dodger stars of 1916. And Miss Gladys Gooding is playing all Lang Syne. Jeff Pepper, Nap Rucker, Zach Wheat. Otto Miller, Chief Myers, Rube Marquard. Boy, names to conjure with as you look back through baseball history. And those who were unable to attend today, Jack Coombs, now baseball coach at Duke University. Duster Mails, now doing uh, work on the West Coast. Fred Merkel, first baseman, now living in Daytona Beach, Florida. No longer living, our manager, Wilbert Robinson, of that 16 team. Ed Appleton, a pitcher. First baseman, Jake Daubert. Third baseman, Harry Mowry, and Sherrod Smith. As a matter of fact, Sherrod Smith just passed away not long ago. And uh, if you want to go back into history... In that 1916 World Series, there was a guy in there pitching named Babe Ruth for the Boston Red Sox. And uh, it was in that series when the longest game ever played uh, in the history of the Fall Classic. The Dodgers lost to the Red Sox in the 14th inning. Babe Ruth, who won the 2-1 to decision, passed on last year. And Sherry Smith, who pitched for the Dodgers in that game, also passed along recently. And now the lineups for today's game. For the New York Yankees, Phil Rizzuto leading off playing shortstop. Hitting second and playing first base, Tommy Henrik. Batting third is Yogi Berra and catching. Hitting fourth, Joe DiMaggio, center field. Hitting fifth, Bobby Brown, third base. Hitting sixth, Gene Woodling, left field. Batting seventh, Cliff Mapes, right field. Hitting eighth, Jerry Coleman, second base. In the ninth spot in the order and pitching, Eddie Lopat who won 15 and lost 7 for the Yankees in the regular season. For the Dodgers, a change by Burt Schotten. Leading off, as usual, will be captain and shortstop, Pee Wee Reese. Hitting second, Eddie Mixus, third base. In the third spot in the order will be Duke Snyder, playing center field. In the cleanup spot, Jackie Robinson, second base. Hitting fifth, Gil Hodges, first base. Batting sixth, Louis Almo, left field. Hitting seventh today will be Roy Campanella, catching. In the eighth spot in the order, Gene Hermansky, playing right field. And in the ninth spot, pitching Don Newcomb. Carl Farillo normally would be playing today, but that injury of his, that groin injury, has hampered him considerably. He has attempted magnificently to play in the series for the Dodgers. A great outfielder, a great thrower, and uh, a fellow who had been murdering that ball in the last couple of months of the season. But when injuries hamper you, it's just rough and tough. And though he gave it a great try, Bert Schotten realizes he had to go with Gene Hermansky today in place of Perillo in right field. Gene, a left-hand batter against a left-hand pitcher. But sometimes there are certain left-handed batters who can hit left-hand pitchers uh, as well as others, particularly... Uh, when it comes to the type of stuff the left-hander delivers, and Lopat is a slow-stuff tight pitcher. The umpires for today at the plate will be Lou Jordan of the National League. At first base will be Cal Hubbard of the American League. At second base will be Beans Reardon of the National League. And at third base, Art Passarella of the American League. The foul line umpires will be Ed Hurley and George Barr with Hurley in left field today and Barr in right field today. The umpires are moving down to their positions after the meeting at home plate with Reese and Stengel exchanging batting orders. 
Stengel stops and Lopat chats with him with a smile on his face and then continues to warm up. Don Newcomb's still warming up. You know, among other things I never knew till now is the fact that since 1910, under our American economic system, we have more than doubled the production of each of us for every hour we work, and in the same period have reduced our average work week by 18 hours. This spectacular progress, unmatched anywhere else in the world, has gone hand in hand with the preservation of our basic freedoms. We still have a long ways to go, a lot of faults to correct, economic, human, and otherwise, but the fact remains that our American economic system has brought more benefits to more people than any other ever devised by man. Learn more about it. Drop a postcard to Gillette, Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City, for the free booklet, The Miracle of America, which explains how a still better living can be had for all. The umpires have uh, taken their places. In a moment, we shall have the playing of the national anthem by Miss Gladys Gooding, whom Red told you about yesterday who sings and uh, the uh, anthem and plays the organ here at Ebbets Field. And while there go the Dodgers trotting out on the field, and as they rush to their positions, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Here the World Series exclusively on WOR. See it on WOR-TV Channel 9, WOR and WOR-FM New York. The Dodgers are out on the field. Bill Rizzuto is coming out of the Yankee dugout with a couple of bats. Don Newcomb walks out to the hill. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Gladys Gooding and our national anthem. set to go in the fourth game of the World Series. Each of the first three have gone right down to the last pitch. The tension has been terrific. Every one of them decided in the ninth inning and right down to the last pitch before you could know which team had finally won. And now as we get ready to go, moving into the microphone, a fellow who has done a brilliant job of reporting in this World Series, as he has in every previous World Series he's done, dating way back to 1935. I refer, of course, to the old redhead, Red Barber. Thank you, Mel. Just trying to keep up with you. Afternoon, everybody. Big Newcomb is throwing down to Campanella. Rizzuto is getting ready to be the first hitter for Game 4. And this program comes to you by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball. It is intended only for the private use of our audience. Any publication or reproduction of this program and commercial use of the program is prohibited. As Mel told you, it's an overcast afternoon. All the folks are here. The weatherman says that it will not rain. The temperature is in the middle 70s and the humidity is quite high. And the humidity is expected to get higher. In other words, it's an afternoon for perspiration. The air is quite heavy and quite muggy. The Yankees, lead of the three games played, 2-1. to one. Rizzuto, who is 1-for-11 so far. Small right-hand batter, 
Very active. Big Newcomb coming back for the second time on two days rest. Big right hand to throw. Fastball inside. Ball one. Newcomb and Campanella the battery. The infield. Hodges at first. Robinson at second. Reese at short. Eddie Mixes with the left hander. Eddie Lopat starting for the Yankees. There's a third. He's right hand hitter. Omar in left field and center Snyder in the right field of Hamansky. Newcomb delivers a fastball swung on and drilled for a base hit out into center field. So Rizzuto comes up with his second hit of the series and begins this ball game sharply. So Rizzuto opens up with a single. Sharply out in the center. One up and one on. The uh, first hit off Newcomb when he started the opening game of the series didn't come until Lindell's single with one out in the second inning. In other words, Newcomb retired the first four men if you're interested in any sort of a comparison such as that. It is no score. And time is called for the moment. Uh, uh, Campanella is ho- calling over to the Brooklyn uh, bench. Olmo in left field wants his sunglasses. Uh, the sun has not broken through the overcast, but it has made enough penetration to where there is a glare coming down. So the field of Olmo figures that discretion is certainly the better part of valor, and this World Series game is held up. Newcomb is now tossing a few pitches down. Sunglasses have not yet been discovered in the Brooklyn bench to be taken out to left fielder Olmo, who's walked in behind shortstop. We might give you a little note on Don Newcomb coming back up to two days rest. Uh, Manager Shotton uh, said before the ball game, we were talking to him, uh, he said uh, that he wasn't going to announce that Newcomb was going to be the starting pitcher, but he was going to talk to Newcomb there's Rex Barney loping out with those sunglasses for left fielder Olmo now. And uh, Shotton said that he was going to ask Newcomb how he felt about pitching with two days rest. If Newcomb said he felt okay, then he'd go. Newcomb said he didn't feel okay with just two days rest, he wouldn't go. Because, said manager Shotton, when you realize it, it's these players' money that they're playing for. As a manager, I don't even have a, a vote for a share. So Newcomb apparently told manager Shotton he was ready, willing, and able. So here he is on the mound. Rizzuto has touched him up for a line single. He's at first base, perhaps the best and most dangerous base runner for the Yankees, and the batter is Tommy Henry. Pitch, curve, low inside for ball one. One ball, no strikes. It's a smokyish, uh, hazyish, very much the overcast, high humidity, warm afternoon, temperature in the 70s. Big crowd on hand, headed by Commissioner Chandler. Had a lot of dignitaries attending these games. This is Truman. This is Coolidge. Ex-President Hoover. The mayor. And of course, the bar of presidents, Jim Lyons of the Bronx, John Cashmore of the Brooklyn. Now, here's the pitch to Henrik. Swung on a high foul ball out of play. Back of the Brooklyn bench. One ball, one strike. You can look down seat by seat behind their respective uh, dugouts and there are the big wheels of course of baseball and the many other walks of life Tommy Henrik left hand batter he has one for 11 at one beat Newcomb in the first game there's a pitch out but Rizzuto wasn't going any place ball two two balls one strike Frankie Crosetti with that high piping voice that carries so well coaching at third very alert quick moving Quick thinking fellow. Bill Dickey, one of the great all time catchers of the game, pushing it first. Rizzuto leads off, no score, nobody out. Henry hits a ground foul and it dies as it goes over toward the first base stand, roll right up against the box in uh, front of Commissioner Chandler. Two balls, two strikes. Rizzuto, who can scamper. He bothered Newcomb, if you recall, when he got on base in uh, game one of the World Series back at the stadium. Zuto got on with a... uh, in that first game with a force out. Sixth inning. A two and two. Newcomb takes first pitches. Henrik swings, grounds it foul sharply back to first base. Ball comes off. First base coach Bill Dickey throws it out. No score off. Gillette's safe to raise the company. 
very pleased and privileged to send you this broadcast to the World Series. Henry, chokes that stick a little bit. All reliable, they call him, at the stadium. Newcomb delivers as a ground ball hit the first just fouled by a foot. Big Cal Hubbard, who moves extremely easily for any size man, and especially as big as he is. Hubbard giving the out sign. Two balls, two strikes. I remember a few years ago talking to uh, George Hallis, the coach and owner of the Chicago Bears, and I guess about as good a judge of uh, professional football players as anybody has ever seen. I asked him um, who was the toughest football player that he had ever been in contact with and knew anything about. And Hallis said, without any hesitancy, Cal Hubbard. The guy at some point at first. Players don't storm at him too long, uh, we might uh, add in. Blue Jordan working balls and strikes back at the plate. Hubbard at first, Ridden at second. Passarella is at third. Throw to first, not in time. Down the left field corner is Ed Hurley. In the right field corner, George Ball. No score. Newcomb with deliberation, ready to pitch again. 2-2 two -two does. Henry hits a ground foul outside first base. Ball kicks back over. And first base umpire Hubbard throws her up. Still 2-2. Two two. Henry uh, in spinning on that ball. Kicked a little dirt on the plate and Jordan brushes it off. It is continuing to get brighter and more glarish. The, uh, what's it, as they say, uh, down east in New England, that the sun is... Uh, Burning it off? That seems to be what's happening. The other man has certainly not missed a single prediction. He said it would uh, finally be clear this afternoon, and it's becoming clear right now. It looks like in another inning or so, it will be completely clear if it keeps on at the present gate. All right, Newcomb set two and two. Nobody out. No score. Run it first. Throw to first again. Rizzuto takes his lead. He's quick. He has an extremely rapid lateral move, which any good uh, base runner must have. The pitch is swung on a high foul ball back of the Yankee dugout. Still two and two. Of course, one of the great strengths of humanity is uh, the feeling for other people, memory, sentiment. And that's one of the great strengths of baseball. And uh, that was certainly very uh, vividly shown before this ball game began. When, uh, as the guest of President Branch Rickey of the Brooklyn Ball Club, those numbers who could get here of the 1916 pennant winning team were introduced. Henrik swings a ground ball, hit in the right field for a base hit. Rizzuto goes down to second base, then goes on for third. Hermanski's throw over to third base is not in time, and Henrik holds it first. So it's a single in the right by Henrik, and the Yankees are pressing forward with men at first and third and nobody out, and the Brooklyn bullpen gets up and goes to work. Joe Hatton. Needle to start throwing to the bullpen uh, catcher, Sam Naron. So Henrik comes up with his second hit of the World Series. It's the second hit of this fourth game, and all of his hits are off Don Newcomb. This is a clean single to right. Rizzuto, who can run, got a good jump, took the extra base. Reese comes in from short, talks to Newcomb for the moment. So Newcomb has now got one foot in the pickle bat. Yogi Ballam. Catching his third game. He has no hits out of six official at bats, but he got a very telling base on balls with one out in the ninth inning yesterday. Outfield toward right, the infield is in double play depth. Others they'll give a run to get outs. Runners at first and third. Newcomb's pitch low inside, a slider, and Barra checked his swing in time. Ball one. Now Robinson comes in from second base. Says something to Don. Campanello goes out to the mound. Left hand to Joe Hatton, who has been in the bullpen every day been throwing for the last couple of days, is now throwing today. It's no score, but the Yankees are pushing forward here at the opening bell. No man retired. Yogi Berra, stocky, strong, free-swinging left-hand batter at the plate. One ball, no strikes. DiMaggio waiting on deck. Then Bobby Brown. Rizzuto, who can fly, leading down off third. He just took the extra base, which is an important thing in this business of baseball. Henrik who was a good runner, although not too swift. He knows how to run. Leads off first. The infield halfway up. The pitch is swung on. Fouled off. One ball, one strike. Nobody has gone down to the Yankee bullpen at all. In fact, they see Joe Page. Probably doesn't even know how to act. He's sitting right there against the water cooler in the dugout. I guess he feels a stranger hanging around that dugout. What a job he did yesterday. Well, now, let's see... 
Big Newcomb. Ready. Right hand to pitches. There's a ground foul outside first base. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes. Don fooling with the pitcher's rosin bag. Rizzuto and Henrik have opened up with singles. If you just joined us on Gillette's broadcast of the World Series, no score, and the Yankees are trying to give Newcomb a rough time right here at the start. Casey Stengel walks in front of the dugout. Hollis set him up to Barra. The one and two pitch hit down to third base. Here comes the throw to the plate, and Rizzuto is caught in a run up. Campanella throws the ball back to Mixes, bluffs him into third base, tags him, runs him out of the baseline, runs him out of the baseline, and Henrik is called out second base, and Robinson tags him, and he's out. So two men are out. Two men are out. No score. And Bella winds up at first. And now we've got a rule bar. The Yankees are claiming, I think, that Jordan called time. That's what the Yankees are claiming. And the umpires say, no, he did not call time. Jordan uh, had to call the out on Rizzuto, who was not tagged. He ran out. Now let's go back over that play with Rizzuto at third base. Henrik at first. Barra hit a solid ground ball, sharply at third base, and mixes. Rizzuto came halfway to the plate and realized he was a dead bird and stopped. Mixes through the ball to Campanella. Campanella running Rizzuto back toward third. Rizzuto tried to run around Campanella and ran out of line into foul ground and was called out by Jorda. Then Henrik, who had turned to the left two part second base, was out when Campanella threw to Robinson. And Henrik immediately started to protest, claiming time had been called. But it had not. So two men are out. That's the first Brooklyn double play. No score. Far at first, DiMaggio takes a curve ball low outside for ball one. Well... You expect things to happen here at Ebbets Field? It does, sooner or later, and there it was. The Yankees got hung up on the bases, and I guess Casey Stengel said, hey, that used to happen when I was at Brooklyn. Throw, fastball, is too low, ball two. The Yankees, in this series, had come up with uh, three double plays. This is the first one for Brooklyn. And that double play was the third baseman to the catcher to the second baseman assist for the third baseman, a put out and an assist for the catcher and a put out for the second baseman. DiMaggio swings, misses, throw to first base, not in time. Campanella will fire, Dora getting back. So your double play was five to two to four if you're scoring. And of course that takes Newcomb out of quite a hole that was yawning for him. It looked as though the Yankees were just about ready uh, uh, to give him a, a very bad first inning. Well, let's see. Two down, no score. DiMaggio up. Takes a fastball outside for ball three, and the count is now three and one. DiMaggio has had one hit for 11 official at-bats, and that was a dribble single down to third base. Barra with a fielder's choice is at first base. Newcomb off the mound, pulling with a handkerchief. Everybody's perspiring today, not only from the pressure of such a ball game, but from the weather. High humidity. Hatfield, deep toward left. There's ball four, and Barrow was running. DiMaggio takes ball four. This is the first base on balls given up by Newcomb. He gave up no walks in the opening game. So, two men gone. The Yankees are at first and second. And Bobby Brown, who came up with a... Money base hit in the ninth inning. When the two down, he singles sharply in the right field. Brown up. He has one for five. He's a dangerous batter. Barrett second. Imagine at first. Two out. Outfield toward right. Brown chokes that stick about three inches. Slender, left hand hitter. Newcomb pitches. Fastball low inside. That ball hit the dirt. Campanella trapped it. Played on by Jordan, examines it, finds it's all right. One ball, no strikes. The sun that threatened to burn off the overcast uh, early in this first inning has been unable to do so, and the clouds have moved back in again.
That ball hit the dirt. Campanella trapped it. Played on by Jordan, examines it, finds it's all right. One ball, no strikes. The sun that threatened to burn off the overcast uh, early in this first inning has been unable to do so, and the clouds have moved back in again. Barra ready to take off on any provocation at second base. Two down, DiMaggio at first, right side of the infield, back on Brown. To play him to pull. Young man who continues his studies down in New Orleans to be a doctor up there at the plate. Bobby Brown. Uh, pitch is low, down by the batter's feet. Ball two, Campanella again blocks it into the dirt. Played up by Jordan, again uh, demands the ball for an inspection. And finds it is scuffed up now, and he throws it out. Two balls, no strikes, and Campanella goes to talk to Newcomb. Newcomb does not have the sharpness of his control today. That is obvious compared to the way he performed over at the stadium Wednesday. Two and all. Crowd quiet. Settle back. Ballpark all decked out in gala red, white, and blue bunting. Jack Collins and his crew done a fine job. Groundkeeper Eddie Durham has, of course, uh, got the field just right. Little do you think about it, but the World Series is the big moment for the fellow who runs the park and the fellow who runs the field. Big for everybody. Now, let's see. Big Newcomb ready to pitch two and all. Does. Brown takes a high outside pass ball for ball three. So, Newcomb is now back in the hole. The double play uh, alleviated some of the pressure, but then came the walk to DiMaggio. Time is called, and the pitching coach, Clyde Sukforth, goes out to the mound to talk to Newcomb. Three balls, no strike. Left-handed Joe Hatton who shares the uh, same honor as manager Stengel, being a boy from Oakland, California. Hatton throwing down the bullpen. Understand there's a proclamation from Oakland which is to be given tomorrow uh, to Casey Stengel. So Suki's back in the dugout. Three balls, no strikes to Brown. You can rest assured that this is not what is called uh, the automatic strike. Brown has gotten his orders from bossman Casey Stengel. Big Newcomb set. Pitches 3 nothing. High outside for ball four, and Brown walks, and the bases are loaded. So Barra, who moved to second on DiMaggio's walk, now moves to third on Brown's walk as DiMaggio moves over to second. Three men on, and Gene Woodling stepping in. Had a fine year out on the Pacific Coast last year and is uh, back for another trial in the majors. Had a very successful uh, workmanlike season with the Yankees. No score. Had a double play. Two hits, two walks. Fielder's choice. Three men are on. Two out. Outfield field toward right. Right now Newcomb's pitch is high outside. A fastball for ball one. He hasn't been particularly close to the plate on these walks. One ball, no strikes. Big rookie who came up to the ball club in May. Wasn't even with it at the start of the season. He's carrying the hopes of uh, Brooklyn trying to get even. Delivers. Too low, over, but low. It's a slider for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. And Stengel has had a tight rein on these hitters. He's just letting Newcomb get into all the trouble that he can. As they say in uh, baseball, Stengel is seeing to it that his hitters do not help the pitcher. In other words, you've got to pitch a wild. Uh, a lot of managers want uh, batters to take. The 2 nothing pitch. In there. There's a throw down to third base. Not in time. Campanella trying to help his pitcher, as the saying goes. Tried to pick Barrow off third. Barrow took a run up the line. While the throw was reasonably close, it wasn't dramatically close. Barra had to slide back. All right, two balls, one strike. Woodling had to take on just now. Left hand hitter in a crouch. Crowds are played from behind. The pitch is swung on with a fly ball into center field. Snyder going back, back. He's under it. He's got it. For the third out, a no run score. So at the end of half an inning, the score is New York nothing, Brooklyn nothing. 
Friends, I'll never have a better chance to tell you about the whale of a shaving bargain that my Gillette folks have dreamed up for series time this year. Now, call it Gillette's World Series Special. The razor set that they're talking about on the air, and any storekeeper will know what you mean. Yep, he'll show you the improved Gillette Super Speed Razor Set, the shaving buy of your lifetime. Men, this razor is a beautifully balanced one-piece razor that changes blades instantly and shaves like nobody's business. With it comes a Gillette dispenser filled with ten factory-sharp Gillette blue blades. Not only that, but the newest thing in razor cases, the durable, transparent styrene case. Now, all this adds up to a $1.75 value, and it's yours for one dollar even. These Gillette Super Speed razor sets are selling like hotcakes. Better ask for yours right away. The stocky southpaw, Eddie Lopat, who is a uh, pitcher with the same sort of uh, philosophy and stuff and delivery as Preacher Roll, although one has uh, been eaten at the uh, bigger end of the trough than the other one, as far as uh, physique is concerned. Lopat gives you knucklers, screwballs, slow curves, and uses his fastball as a change-up, as well as trying to pick a corner of the plate once in a while. Eddie Lopat getting ready. It's his first start in the series. Back of the plate is Yogi Berra. Henrik at first base, at second Coleman, at shortstop Rizzuto, the third baseman is Brown. In the outfield, it's the same as started yesterday. For the Yankees, in left it is Woodling, in center DiMaggio, and in right field Mapes. Barrow takes the last of the warm-up pitches, fires it down to second base. Reese, Mixes, and Snyder, hitting for the Dodgers, no score. And Newcomb was really waiting around in hot water, but he didn't get scalded. That double play uh, pulled him out of it. Reese, who has had two hits for ten at-bats, won a home run. First up, right-hand batter. The Yankee outfield is around toward left. The Tando Lopez pitches and gets, uh, looked like a slider in up there against the hands for a call strike. He throws some of anything. Knuckles, screwballs, sliders, curves. Stocky left-handed deals. There's a curveball hit out into left center field. It is in there for a base hit and extra base. Reese is around first. He's coming into second base. DiMaggio takes the ball on the bounce. It's a double as Reese comes in standing. The Brooklyn captain, Pee Wee Reese, just teed off on a curveball and straightened it out, hung it up the alley in left center field. Woodling went over, couldn't get to the ball, and then fell to the ground deliberately to get out of the way of DiMaggio's throw. So this promises in game four to be a riotous afternoon before it's concluded. The fourth games, are, oddly enough, between the Yankees and the Dodgers, have always taken place at Brooklyn, and they've always had something dramatic. Game 4 and 41 was the Mickey Owen third strike. Game 4 and 47 was the Lavagetto Bevins affair. Eddie Mixes hits a ball in front of the plate. Fair. Barrow recovers, throws to first base. Mixes is out, and Reese is held at second. So, Mixes swinging on the first pitch, beats it right down in front of the plate. Barrow handled himself very well. The catcher firing down the first base from Henry. So, we have one out last to the first. Reese at second. And Snyder, who has one hit for 12 at bats. Left-hand batter, tall, slender. Right fielder Mapes plays him straight away. DiMaggio in center is veered over toward left a little bit. Left fielder Woodling straight away. Time is called. Pitcher Lopat wants to talk to his battery mate. So Yogi goes out to the mound. Lopat in no hurry. He fusses with you and tries to finish you and tries to get you off balance and gives you some of that slow stuff and tries to make you hit a, a breaking pitch or a bad ball. Now, if you're uh, itchy up there at the plate, boy, that low pad really won't help you. See, Snyder leans in, low pad delivers. It's a big curve high outside, ball one. Low pad got a, a big kick out of talking with... Uh, with Mel and me the other day, we were talking about how we try and describe what the pitches are, and he said, well, when I work, I'll give you boys a workout. 
Reese, off second, one out, no score. Left hand, the pitches, the fastball swung on, hit wide of third. Up with it is Brown nicely. The throw over to first base in time. Snyder's out for two steps, and Reese is still bottled at second. So, two are gone. And Robinson stepping in. He has one hit for nine at bat so far in the series. I feel around toward left. Jake Pittler coaching at first base. Pollard's up second to the plate. Milton Stock coaching at third. Reese now ready to take off on anything with two out at second base. No score. Lopat, who set it right down, delivers. Robinson swings, hits it through to short. Rizzuto, a nice play over to first base, into the dirt, and Henrik jugged it. Oh, Robinson is out. Henrik just did get that ball on the skip. It looked for a second like he might juggle it, but he stayed with it. So, that is all. Rizzuto made a fine play, just like a quick bug. Uh, he scooted over toward second base, toward his left hand side, came up with the ball. And he had to take it right off of Reese's feet as Pee Wee delayed trying to shield the infielder from the side of the ball, which is a trick which accomplished base runners use all the time. But Rizzuto made the play. His hard throw was into the dirt, and Henrik just did stay with it. That's something when you have to dig him out. So that's all for a threat for each side. So we've had uh, an exciting but a scoreless first inning. Newcomb, uh, hoping that uh, he's over his wild streak, is ready to pitch in the second inning. And we'll pause uh, ten quick seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. The World Series is heard exclusively on WOR. See it on WOR-TV Channel 9, WOR and WOR-FM, New York. Moving into the second inning, it's the last third of the Yankee hitting list of nine. Right fielder Mapes, a left-hand batter, followed by Jerry Coleman, who now is tied with Pee Wee Reese for the most hits in the series, each possessing three, and then Pitcher Lopat, who hasn't been up in the series. This is his first appearance. Mapes, 0 for 5, left-hand batter. Very much a uh, hazy overcast afternoon. It's extremely warm, muggy. Big right-hander delivers, fastball too high, and it is ball one. Newcomb, 6'5", 230 pounds. He's big. Outfield toward right. Mapes, sort of a slenderish, six-foot left-hand hitter. Swings as a bounding ball at Newcomb, grabs it to bound. Throws over to first base to Hodges, and Mapes is out. So the hot bounder, the pitch is feared. So, one up, one gone, opening up the second inning. No score. And here is Jerry Coleman, who bratted in the fourth, and as it uh, paid off the winning run for the Yankees yesterday. Coleman has had a fine series. Played very well at second base. He's had three hits for 11 at bat. Outfield, straight away. Infield, straight away. Coleman works up on the handle of that bat. Newcomb slider misses on the outside, ball one. Don doesn't call that uh, hard, uh, quick curve of his a slider. He calls it a hard curve ball. Everybody else calls that uh, sort of pitch a slider. That's become, the, I guess, the, one of the most overworked words in baseball in the last five years. One and all pitch, fastball swung on a high foul. Campanella coming back close to the stands, close to the stands. He's got it. So a catch of the foul ball by the catcher, two men out. No score. And Pitcher Lopat is over at the Yankee bat rack. Hasn't found his stick as yet. Now he's got it. Here he comes, walking uh, easy up to the plate. He's a nonchalant sort of a fella. Lopat, left hand hitter. Stocky. Thick through the shoulders and chest. Light red hair. Hot field. Shaded toward right. Newcomb's fastball is in there for a call strike. Nothing in one. Two down. Nobody on. Second inning. Things moving easily now after the uh, frenetic first inning that we had on both sides, especially for the Yankees. 
Pitch outside. One ball, one strike. Pack stands rather quiet for the second. Just waiting. One and one pitch. Curve swung on and missed. One and two. Sharp curve ball at the knees. One ball, two strikes. Lopat swings from the end. He stands up there like a workman with that stick. The sun is getting through a little brighter. Sort of glary. The one and two pitch is swung on a fly ball out into deep and dead center field. Snyder is back, turns, waits. He has it, and nothing across. The Yankees in the top of the second inning. And it is still no runs in the ball game. And, folks, when I tell you that Red Roth, former Yankee third baseman, who did such a great job managing the Detroit Tigers this year, looks mighty sharp today, well, you know, I know, he uses Gillette Blue Blades. Yep, and here he is to tell you why. Fans, I'm like you. I have only one face, and I don't go for nicking and scraping it. So I use Gillette Blue Blades. You can't beat them. Red, how do you like the Gillette dispenser? It's a real convenience. Makes blade changing lots easier. Men, for slick, comfortable shaves that make your face look its best and feel refreshed, get help to Gillette Blue Blades. Yep, and for extra convenience at no extra cost, buy 10 or 20 at a time in the modern Gillette dispenser that zips them out on wrap, ready for use. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever hold. Well, Red, one more question. Um, how do you feel about this ball game today? Do you sort of sense the smell something? Yes, I think there's going to be a lot of happen today, Red. It, the pitching doesn't look quite as sharp as it has in the first three ball games. Newcomb, uh, for one thing, is much more unsteady than, uh, than he has been in his previous start. Okay, Red. Well, I see that Hodges is up now to hit against Lopat. Last of the second inning, no score. Outfield toward left. Hodges takes a let-up ball to outside, ball one. This is game four and game four at Ebbets Field with the Dodgers and Yankees for the last two times has always had set minutes that don't go away very far. As a look like a knuckleball to outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Hodges, one hit for eight at-bats. That one hit drove in uh, the run in game two. Stocky left-handed delivers and gets it over the outside for a call strike. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Lopez seems to uh, sort of sling himself sideways, working sidearm pretty much. Delivers. Fastball swung on as a high fly ball into short left field. Woodling under it easily, waiting. He's got it. Throw one up, one away. Last of the second inning. No score. Louis Olmo moving up to the plate. Olmo has two for six so far. The second one was a 19 inning home run yesterday. It threatened to precipitate a rally. It did get a rally on the way, but it fell short. Now it is getting quite bright again. Notice short stuff for Zudo. He's checking uh, the glare up above, peering up underneath his glove hand. Lopat uh, starts to pitch and decides he wants another sign. Gets it. Left hand it works. A curveball swung on. There's a high fly ball right out to the left field of Woodling, who's under it, waiting, waiting. He has it. It's all two up. Two putouts for left fielder Gene Woodling and Roy Campanella, who has two for eight, and his second hit was a home run. Last run in the game yesterday. Stocky, right hand batter. Barra settles down to give the sign. Jordan working off the catcher's left shoulder into the crack between the receiver and the hitter, who's right hand batter. Two out. Things quiet. Lopat delivers. Spinning uh, fastball high outside. Ball one.
stands there with sort of an impassive uh, countenance, chewing gum steadily. Lopat, who doesn't waste much time, deals. As a trickler up toward first base, Lopat himself feels it. The pitcher's throw to first, and Campanella's out. And Roy hit a screwball right off the end of his bat and is out. The pitcher coming over to the first base line and firing over to first baseman Henry. So we have a threat in the first inning, a real big threat for the Yankees, which uh, our base running double play broke out. The Yankees got two singles, two walks in the first inning and didn't score. And uh, the Dodgers have a threat in the last of the first inning. Double by Reese, who opened it up. But uh, he never got off second base, and everything was quite quiet in the second inning. This time, you can see that the sky is blue. Well, it's been blue, of course, as we all know. We all know the sun's been up there all the time. But uh, the haze is finally burned away, and the weatherman has hit it right on the nose again. Well, congratulations to him. He said it would be fair, warm, and clear before the game was concluded. And the forecast is for completely clear, sunshiny weather tomorrow afternoon. And remember that because of the New York State Sunday law, tomorrow's game cannot start before 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It is advertised to start at 5 minutes past 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Our Gillette broadcast tomorrow will uh, tee off at 1.45 Eastern Standard Time. For these first four games, as you know, our time has been 12.45. Now we're moving to the third inning. Rizzuto, who began the ball game, blasting a line single in the center field. Up first, second at bat. The scooter now has two hits for 12. Outfield shaded toward left. Infield upper step because of the batter's speed. Pass ball is over. Ball strike. Rizzuto bluffing a bunt. Mixes, of course, uh, has to stay up tight inside third. No third baseman can play back on Rizzuto. He bunt every time. He just keeps him right in there so close he can almost shake hands with him. Newcomb delivers, misses with his curve low outside. That was his sharp curve, one and one. Now the sun is very definitely out, no question about it. All the fellows are wearing sunglasses that uh, would normally wear them. One and one pitch. Curveball hits down to third and one bounce. Mix this over to first to Hodges. That's all for Rizzuto before he's halfway down the line. One up, one away. Tommy Henrik, who uh, hit Newcomb for the dramatic home run, one of the most dramatic home runs in the history of uh, World Series. It's always uh, dangerous to say the most of anything, but certainly one of the most. Uh, Henrik then greeted Newcomb his next time against him with a single in the first inning that sent Rizzuto around the third with nobody out. And now here is Henrik up again. His two hits have been off Newcomb. Tommy failed to hit safely in games two and three. Out field toward right. Right handed kicks, throws, let up curve high outside. Ball one. Henrik is about as all round a threat batter as you'll see. He'll bunt up on occasion. Draw one. He's a good judge of a pitch. There's a pitch low inside, ball two. Newcomb uh, changed on that one, slowed it up a little. Two balls, no strikes. Don pumps, Henrik leans in. The pitch swung on, a sharp bounding ball that Hodges spears with one hand. Newcomb comes over, takes the toss at first for the out, and Henrik is out by a step. First baseman Hodges, two pitcher Newcomb covering. I'd like to comment that throughout the series, all pitchers have fielded their positions brilliantly, especially on those very tough plays going over to first base. Now we have the Yogi up there. Barra, who is 0 for 7, banged into that base running double play in the first inning. Ball game, no score. Barra, stocky left hand hitter, takes a change up. In under the hands of ball one. That's the first full out and out uh, change of pace that Newcomb has thrown in this series. The first time he went all the way out with his slow ball. Works. Pass ball swung on, belted foul in the right field corner. Up into the upper deck. One and one. Barra has uh, 
little piece of white bandage there around his left thumb. That thumb is sore. That's on his catching hand, and of course, uh, catching these pitches uh, hurts that hand, especially as hard as uh, Allen Reynolds was throwing in the opening game. One one pitch to Barra, change up ball, swung on, hit out into right center field. Mike goes right field to Hermansky, under the ball, and makes a catch at deep right center. So, Newcomb uh, going to his uh, change of pace. Sets the Yankees down. One, two, three in the top of the third inning. And uh, the score remains New York nothing, Brooklyn nothing. A band is Red Raw for the Detroit Tigers, to put it when he was on the air. You only have one face, and there's no point nicking and scraping it when you shave. So get acquainted with Gillette Blue Blades and enjoy smooth, refreshing shaves that look swell and feel great. Gillette Blue Blades are made of the finest razor steel the world produces and are tempered to glass-cutting hardness. They are keener, smoother finished, and far longer lasting than other blades that break down prematurely and scrape and pull. When buying Gillette Blue Blades, ask for them in the Gillette dispenser. This handy magazine zips them out unwrapped, ready for use, and costs nothing extra. You get 20 blades, 40 shaving edges, for 98 cents. 10 blades for 49 cents. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever home. In the last of the third inning, no score game, Gene Hermansky, who is starting in right field for the second game because of the fact that uh, Ferrello's groin injury has flared up on him and he's unable to go. Hermansky first up, followed by Newcomb, and then by Reese. Manager Shotton did everything he could to see that Newcomb in uh, game one would be pitted against a right-handed pitcher because Newcomb is a left-hand batter and a good one. But Casey Stengel finally works the thing out the way he wants it by getting left-hander low fat starting against Newcomb the second time that Newcomb comes out. Managers have to figure right down uh, to those things. After all, I know it was a pitcher single yesterday that was most pivotal. And here's low fat delivering to Hermansky who swings and misses on a high inside curveball. I think a lot of folks forgot that Tommy Byrne before he was taken out of the ball game, came up with a base hit that sent the first Yankee run around to third base. You'll recall yesterday afternoon. Kamansky takes a fastball low inside at the shin. Ball one. Lopat. Burley left-hander. Kamansky. Strong, muscular. Left-hand batter. Sun out fully now. Sidearm curve, swung on and missed, strike two. One ball, two strikes. Hermansky didn't hit against many left-handers in the pennant campaign. He was used exclusively against right-hand pitches. One ball, two strikes. Lopat with all that stuff delivers. There's a slow curve that's hit foul down the right field corner. Just about the same spot that Berra hit his foul ball in the upper part of this inning. One ball, two strikes. No score in the ball game. The Yankees lead in the series, as you know, two games to one. And this is that fateful fourth game at Ebbets Field in which things have happened. This uh, was game four with the Yankees, you remember, that Henrik struck out and Mickey Owen missed it in the ninth inning in 41. And with two men out in uh, game four with the Yankees here in 47, Lavagero pinch hit uh, against Bevins. One and two pitch to Hermansky is a curve way outside. Sidearm curve. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Second baseman uh, Coleman notices that uh, the glove of Robinson is just where he doesn't want it to be, so he goes over and moves it. These players have to be important to every little detail. The 2-2 pitch swung on a ground ball foul outside first. That looked to be a screwball. was breaking in on the hands. Ball uh, down the right field corner, bounced in amongst the spectators. Unless balls bounce into the stands, uh, the spectators are not going to get them because it has been uh, announced and announced repeatedly that under no circumstances are fans to lean over the low rail and reach for balls on the playing field, foul or otherwise. Very sound rule. No score. Two balls, two strikes. Kamansky first step last to the third. Lopez delivers, and Gene fouls this one off. Ball down in the dirt. Two and two. But things sort of quiet uh, for the moment. You can look around and you can uh, see this tenseness in all the faces. 
President Dan Topping of the Yankees, sitting with George Weiss, general manager, Del Webb. They're just staring intently. 2-2 two, two pitch. Curveball high and side, ball three. And uh, in their vicinity is uh, Ed Barra, who had so much to do with building the Yankees into the great team that they have been and are. Honey Mack is sitting over there. President Will Harridge. Hank Greenberg, Bill Beck. Hamansky swings, misses the curveball, and it is strike three. So Lopat works on him and strikes him out. It's the first strike out of the ball game. Also, there are two fellows, and I wonder what their thoughts are. Uh, sitting over there uh, in the American League uh, delegation by the dugout. Here's Newcomb coming up to the plate. It's a big hand. The two men I was speaking of in the American League are Eddie Collins and uh, Joe Cronin of the Boston Red Sox. Well, the pennants in both leagues were really bitter this summer, weren't they? Newcomb, left-hand hitter, takes a fastball that's over for a call strike. Had got the inside just above the knees. No balls, one strike. Lopat is the sort of fellow that doesn't uh, uh, numb you or jar you or overpower you. He just like a fellow with a little sharp knife. Just walks around and takes a nick here and a nick there. Delivers a curve, swung on and missed. Strike two. As Jim Turner, coach of the Yankees, says that Lopat uh, pitches pretty much the same way the preacher of Brooklyn pitches. Just nibbles and needles you to death. Throw anything. Delivers. Knuckleball, it was law. Just to the knees. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes. One out. I feel shaded toward right. Newcomb very much an open stance against this left-hander. Lopat works. Curve swung and missed. Strike three. And Newcomb took a wind-up. So that's two strikeouts. Last two batters. Retired by Eddie Lopat. And Pee Wee Reese, who is the only doctor to get on base against Lopat, opened up with a double in the first inning. Reese has three hits for 11. Reese in a square stance, easily balanced. He's the veteran Brooklyn ball player. He goes back to 1940. Spring training camp, they called him the old man of the ball club. He was all of 30 years old. Pitch. Good curve above the knees for a call strike. Nothing won. There is no perceptible win. The air from the humidity is rather heavy. It will hold up a ball that is uh, hit high. Knuckle ball, high outside, ball one. The batters on uh, both sides, as they took pregame batting practice, remarked that they would hit a ball hard and it wouldn't seem to go very far because of the uh, moisture in the atmosphere. Two out, no score, nobody on. Lopat just pitching away. Reese at the plate, count one and one. Pass ball is good. There he came in with his fastball and got it. Just at the inside corner above the knees for call second strike. Very efficient pitch. One and two. One and two pitch. High outside, ball two. We're mentioning some of the uh, American League officials over around the Yankee dugout. Back of the Brooklyn dugout is President Ford Frick sitting there, looking uh, very tense. Of course, his league's a game behind right now. Walter O'Malley, John Smith, co-owners with Branch Rickey, the Brooklyn Ball Club, in their boxes. The 2-2 pitch is swung on as a high fly ball. Let's see, first baseman Henrik says, I'll take it. He's under it and makes the catch midway between first base and pitcher's mound. So, Lopat, aside from Reese's opening double, has got them all. He has retired, and uh, with consummate ease, the last nine. So, uh, let's check our totals, Mel, at the end of three innings. No runs, two hits, and no errors for the Yankees. And no runs, one hit, and no errors for the Dodgers. Well, Newcomb's ambling out to the mound. Uh, this is going to give us time for a little visit, Mel. Uh, how have you seen this ball game, and how do you feel about it? 
Well, Red, I felt uh, very much as you indicated in your remarks in the first inning about the fourth games in every World Series between the Yanks and the Dodgers developing into uh, something of a spectacular nature. And certainly we had uh, a lot of action packed into that first inning, something of an unusual uh, nature with uh, a double play getting runners who were on first and third, the batter himself being safe, and one runner thinking that time had been called. One of those uh, situations that smack of the uh, irregular. And then with Reese leading off the last of the first inning of the double, it looked as if these boys who have been stifled, comparatively speaking, by the pitchers, pitching certainly has predominated thus far in the series, looked as if this was going to be a hitter's day. But just as suddenly as it started, as suddenly did it end, and once again we're back in the pattern of the first three games, but early and still a lot uh, capable of happening, and it probably will. Well, let's wait for that ninth inning anyhow. So here we go on to the fourth inning. No score, and DiMaggio up. He drew a base on balls in that uh, feverish first inning. Joe has one hit an infield single out of 11 at-bats. Big Newcomb pumps once, again, kicks, throws, over for a call strike. Fastball, they just fired right down through there. I feel very much around toward left. Oh, one left, snout in center. A man's skin right. Here come right hands. Fastball high and side up by DiMaggio's hands. One and one. Judging by Joe's reaction to that pitch, he was taking it all the way anyhow. By Joe, his feet uh, widespread. Boy, does he want to hit one. And one pitch is swung on. There's a high drive deep out toward left center field. Snyder goes back close to the wall, close to the wall. He's got it. That ball looks to be going upstairs when it took off. Didn't get there. It may be that this uh, humid air today held it up just enough because that ball's trajectory was tremendously high, as high as the top of the double deck stand. And then it seemed to just come plummeting straight downward. So that's the uh, best hit ball that DiMaggio has turned loose. And he's out. Put out for the center fielder. And the batter now is Bobby Brown. He too walked in the first inning. Swings as a foul ball out of play back to the Yankee dugout. No balls, one strike. One gone, top of the fourth. No score. And the wheels are grinding slowly. Tensely again. Sun out in full force. The pitch swung on and missed. Newcomb had that ball sinking then, and uh, he gets that effect when he takes a little bit off of his fastball. No balls, two strikes. Brown, one for five. It was a big single, as it uh, proved to be, that he hit in the right field with two out top of the ninth yesterday. Pitch, high inside, one ball, two strikes. Bill Dickey, pacing restlessly in the coach's box at first base. Crisetti doesn't pace down at third, he just goes one place and stands. That field toward right. Now the defensive players on the toes. Newcomb delivers one and two. Outside for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. To show you the tension, as soon as a pitch is made and is taken at the plate, you can see the infielders and the outfielders, all seven of them, immediately take a step forward to regain their balance. Then they get set again. Have to be ready to go. The 2-2 pitch swung on, fouled off. Still two and two. One away. Base is clear here in the fourth. Remember that airtime for the Gillette broadcast of the World Series tomorrow will be 1.45 Eastern Standard Time, or one hour later than it has been for the first four games. 2-2 pitch. Swung on. Bounced down toward first and foul. Still two and two. There's a spectator stepping out of the stands to uh, come up with that ball. And I imagine that that's going to uh, 
probably draw some little uh, reprimand because it has been announced, and for very good reasons, that nobody is supposed to lean over much they step on the field to get a ball that uh, is in play. And a foul ball is still in play. Well, the umpire declares it dead. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch is swung on. There's drilled in the left center field. It's going to be in the alley for an extra base. There's Brown whistling to the left around first base. Snyder slips, comes up with the ball. Brown is around second and then holds on, standing as the throw comes into third. So there's a real solid line drive double right up the alley in left center field, just where they were not playing it. So with one gone, Bobby Brown comes up with his second hit on his sixth official at bat. A line double that on the second bounce went up against the concrete in left center field, about 375 feet away. Hodges comes over from first, talks to Newcomb. Robinson has come in from second and is talking to Don now. So with one gone, the Yankees come up with their second threat as far as base runners are concerned. That for the Yankees gives them a total of five doubles so far in the series. And Gene Woodling, who got one of those doubles yesterday... He has one for four. He was one for three yesterday, and he's off for one today. Woodling made the third out in the first inning. Takes a slider low inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Brown, who's a good runner, leads off second. Outfield toward right. Woodling in a crouch, left hand hitter. Jokes his stick about an inch. And backs out of the box, time called. No score. The Yankees had a big threat in the first inning when Rizzuto and Henrik opened up the singles and men were suddenly first and third. But then Barra hit into a double play. Newcomb throws. Low. Ball two. And if you just joined us, that threat in the first inning after the, uh, the double play was a bounding ball of the third baseman. Rizzuto, the runner from third, was caught in a run-up. And then Henrik, who was the original runner at first in that sequence, overran second base and was picked off. Barra wound up at first. Then Newcomb walked the next two men, but he got Woodling, who is now at bat. In the first inning, he hit a fly ball to center field to Snyder. Now the Yankees have their second threat, and with one out, Brown is at second with a double. Woodling takes a high curve, four ball three. Three and all. Newcomb trying to be all so careful. Three balls, no strikes. Joe Hatton begins to fidget around down the Brooklyn bullpen. The left-hander was up in the first inning. The 3 nothing pitch is a curve low for ball four. So Woodling walks. And the Yankees are at first and second. This is the third walk given up by Newcomb today in three and the third innings. He walked no man in uh, the first game of the series. And Hatton is now up to start throwing to Sam Nairn. Catcher Campanella walks out to the mound to say something to Newcomb. Presetti coaching at third base. Follows the encouragement to the present Yankee batter now, Cliff Mapes. Mapes uh, bounced out, pitched to first in the second inning, 0 for 1 today, and 0 for 6 so far in the series. Left hand hitter. Outfield toward right, infield, upper step. Fastball is low and inside for ball one. 1 and 0. Now you can feel the tension mounting. Yankees putting on the pressure. Newcomb deliberately taking the sign. Comes to a stop position. Check second. Pitches. Fastball swung on and hit down the left field corner. It might be trouble. Olmo going over, 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 and the ball is fair in the left field corner for an extra base hit. In comes Brown. Around third base, coming in to score is uh, Woodling. He he scores the throw, gets away from Campanella. It's a double for Mapes. He hit that ball no more than six inches fair. Right down in the left field corner, 348 feet away. They were playing him, he hit into right. He sliced back the other direction. And again, the wisdom of having an umpire in each foul corner was plainly demonstrated then. That would have been a very tough one to have had to call from back on the infield because the stands jut out in the left field corner and there's a low railing of seats coming right along on the foul ground. The Yankees are now ahead two to nothing on a double in the left field corner. The umpire in the left field corner, Ed Hurley, was right on top of the... He wasn't five feet away from the ball when it struck. Had that ball sliced another couple of inches, she'd have been fouled. 
That's a very tough corner. It's about the toughest corner, I think, in the major league. Especially when an umpire is distant. It's caused many a rhubarb here at Brooklyn. But with the umpire down in the corner, that was it. Commissioner Chandler started using the alternates that way, if you recall, in the 47 series. Okay, so Mapes comes up with his first series hit, and the Yankees are now out in front two to nothing. Hatton continues calling in the Brooklyn bullpen. Mapes walking down off second, feeling better about everything, and Coleman is at the plate. He has three hits so far in the series. Takes a sort of a little curve off the hand for a call strike. Presetti, the third base coach, had both of those Yankee runners going. It was easy for Brown, of course, but uh, Woodling, they had to start him and run him all the way from first base, and he scored from first easily. The throw came in, bounced away from Campanella, but made no difference. There's a high fly ball hit into short left field, almost coming over close to the foul line, and makes the catch in foul ground. So that's the second out. Coleman, foul ball to the left fielder. Two to nothing is the score in favor of the Yankees here in the top of the fourth inning. Mapes slicing a double down in the left field corner. And now pitcher Eddie Lopat, who's a rich man as far as pitches go. He knows how valuable each of these two runs is that he possesses. Actually, he's going to try and make it three if he can. A base hit might very well do it. Mapes runs well on his long legs. Lopat is one of the good hitting pitchers in the trade. Newcomb checks second, delivers. Curve too low, ball one. Big Don. Set, look at second. Works. Go pet swing. And there is a base hit going into left center field. She's in there. It's another double for him if he wants to run it out. And now is Lopat going into second base. Here comes the throw. Lopat slides. No, he stands. And he is safe. He almost fell off second base. Naturally makes the score to make it 3 nothing. Lopat doubles. But uh, by the fact he started to slide, then decided he didn't have to slide. And such is his stand-up momentum that he almost fell off second base. His foot did go off, but he reached back with a hand. And Bean Redden was right on top of that play to call it. Robinson put an early tag on him, and then Lopat fell off the ball and then reached back with his hand before Robinson could re-tag him. So Lopat is safe with a double, and the Yankees are out in front three to nothing, and I think this is going to be all for Newcomb. There's Clyde Sukforth pointing to the bullpen, and Joe Hatton is to come off. So Lopat himself hits a line drive double in the left center field corner, and this makes it three nothing in favor of New York. So Joe Hatton is making the walk in from the bullpen back of the right field corner. He's going across past first base right now. Newcomb, who didn't have it today, will soon leave the mound. He's just waiting to uh, wish Hatton luck and go through the perfunctory uh, courtesy of the situation. The jacket taken down to Lopat at second. There's Newcomb walking off. And the Yankees are on top solidly now. 3-0. So we'll have a little while while Hatton gets the feel of the mound, throws down to Campanella, and let's use up ten of those seconds for station identification. This is the Neutral Broadcasting System. The World Series is heard exclusively on WOR. See it on WOR TV Channel 9, WOR and WOR FM, New York. Joe Hatton, slender, blonde, Slightly bowed at the knees, left-hander, taking over on the mound. Won a dozen ball games this last season. Lost eight. Hatton um, appeared uh, briefly, worked uh, in and out, uh, got in four different games, a total of nine innings, and uh, gave up seven earned runs in the World Series against the Yankees in 1947. All right, she's through to nothing in favor of the Yankees. We're leading in games two to one. And as Casey Stengel said before today's ball games, and well, if we can win this one, Look like we'll be sitting a little comfortably. And, uh, of course, they have to try and do it. Look, Pat has just kept himself with a double, and now here is the pseudo up here in the fourth. Right in here, a Hatton pitches a fastball over for a call strike. So we got left-handers to both sides. Hatton's place in the Brooklyn bullpen is now taken by the lean right-hander Jack Batter, who relieved yesterday, and uh, who was hit by Coleman for a single that knocked in the Yankees' fourth, and as it turned out to be their winning run. 
I feel shaded toward left. Two out. Three runs in. Curve ball hangs low outside. One ball, one strike. Rizzuto is one for two today. He has two hits for 13 official at bats so far in the series. Three runs. All charged off Newcomb, of course, and five hits for the Yankees. Gone out of there after three and two thirds innings. Hatton works one and one, too high with a fastball high and outside. Two balls, one strike. Rizzuto a little bit back from the plate. Slightly over the close stance. Took that stick up an inch. He's a threat to do most anything. He can hit the right, pull the ball, also can take. And he's a good bunter. Two on pitch. Swings and hits a hot one through in the left field for a base hit. There's Lopez wheeling around third base. Here comes the throw from Olmo. It might be close at the plate, and Lopez is out. He was out for 20, and Capanella gave it to Big Decoy. He just stood there, so there's no throw coming. And so the throw from Olmo was perfect on the second bounce, and so ends the inning. But the pitchers didn't get him out. The, the final uh, pitch that did get anybody out was left fielder Olmo. So Rizzuto a single to left for his second hit of the day. And Lopat is thrown out at the plate. Left fielder Olmo to catcher Campanella. So the Yankees pick up three in the fourth inning. And at the end of three and a half innings, the score is New York three and Brooklyn nothing. You fellows who are up on baseball know that a single play often determines the outcome of a game. Yes, and those who use modern Gillette one-piece razors know they can't be matched for shaving ease and convenience. Twist the razor open. Zip, it's loaded. Twist again, and you're ready for the slickest shave ever. There's nothing to take apart or put together, nothing to jam or clog, and the razor wrenches clean in a second. Every Gillette one-piece razor comes in an attractive, serviceable travel case and includes a ten-blade Gillette dispenser. See the new Gillette Super Speed razor set, a big dollar seventy-five value for only a dollar. Also, take a look at the gold-plated Gillette Milord, two seventy-five and the superb gold-plated aristocrat, 379. Any one of these precision-made Gillette razors will give you utmost shaving ease and convenience. Lopat was out there running on the bases. He ran in for his double, as you'll recall. He tried to score on a solid hot single to left field, was thrown out at the plate, and he is still being cleaned up there in the dugout after his slide. The fans are a little bit restive. Uh, they want to see him come out in the game resume. Three nothing favor the Yankees. And uh, Mel, how do you see things now? Well, I was just thinking back to that fourth inning. It was uh, an oddity in that three left-hand hitters got doubles, and they all hit to the opposite field. That is to say, normally you figure uh, these fellows, uh, left-hand batters, to pull toward right or right center. They are left-hand hitters who don't pull. However, Bobby Brown does happen to be the type of hitter that will hit the ball where it's pitched. He'll hit the all fields. He doubled the left center. Mapes, uh, who normally will pull the ball, on occasion, uh, I've seen him uh, in the last couple of years hit a lot of them down the left field line like that. And oddly enough, that ball that he hit, he has so much power, it not only didn't uh, miss very much by going, uh, very much going foul, it also didn't miss much going into the left field stands for a home run. That is to say, approximately... Uh, Figuring a left-hand hitter hitting a ball that far into that left corner when he usually pulls to the right. He, in other words, he got an awful lot of power behind it, more so than anybody figured he might. It was uh, sort of an odd inning all the way around at that. All right, Mr. Allen. Anything else now before we go into the last sport? All caught up. All caught up. Okay, and I see that Eddie Lopat's all caught up. He's ready to go now. And the Yankee ball club of field. Left-hander Lopat, who's ahead now, three to nothing, and that third run's his. Uh, Barrow back of the plate. First base is Hendrick at second base, Coleman at shortstop, Rizzuto. And at third base it is Brown. Brown, who began the assault on Newcomb with one out with a whistling line drive double. In left field, here's Woodling in center field, DiMaggio. This must be a tough series for Joe. Not hitting. Of course, he's playing on his nerves, what he did all year. And in right field is Mapes. Sliced that double down the left field corner. Well, we've got Eddie Mixes, first up in the last of the fourth inning, thrown out catcher to first in the ball which he banged in front of the plate in the first inning. 3 nothing, New York. Big spinning curveball is over for a call strike. Lopat, who is quite a competitor, he works with that noggin of his. 
Now Bidger defending his three to nothing lead. Gives a screwball in there, swung on and missed strike two. That was the biggest screwball that he threw as far as you could see it break. That one really was going down and back. He throws his screwball at two different gates, slow one, fast one. Nothing in two. Makes a slightly open stance. They play him to pull a little. Let up ball on the outside. One ball, two strikes. Buffett walking around. Solid pitcher. Doesn't get flustered. Knows his trade, steadies it. Deals. Fastball over. Call strike three. Well, that was the change. Following the screwball, then suddenly the fastball. Right over. And next is they just caught looking. Well, that's the sort of pitcher that Lopat is. He works around you. He is a head pitcher. That's three strikeouts for him. Now we have Duke Snyder, who is 0 for 1, thrown out third to first in the first inning. For the Yankees, three. For the Dodgers, nothing. The Yankees coming up with three runs in the fourth. I feel the... Uh, is divided against Snyder. There's a high fly ball into right center field. Mapes going over. Signals he'll take it. The Maggio's out of the way. The right field is under it and makes the catch. So that's all for Snyder. High fly ball to right fielder Cliff Mapes. Two gone last of the fourth. Reese opened up on Lopat as the first Brooklyn batter with a double. And not another Dodger has been able to turn to the left at first base. They've all had to go to the right. Jackie Robinson, who is off for one today, thrown out short to first. There was a fine play by Rizzuto. And throwing Robinson out in the first inning, an equally fine play by Henrik at first base. Throw. Looks to be a fast screwball on the outside. Ball one. Robinson is one for ten. I feel toward left. Sun shining brightly. Very threatening at noon. There's a let-up breaking ball, low outside ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Stocky left hander. Just standing around the back of that mound like he owned it. He acts as his unconcerned as though he were at an afternoon tea in somebody's backyard. Now he's ready. Pumps once. Pumps again. Delivers two nothing. And misses with his fastball on the outside. He tried to clip that outside corner for a strike. Eyes behind, 3-0. and oh. Robinson is, uh, of course, pitched to more carefully than any other hit in the book in batting order. 3-0 pitch is low inside for ball four, and Jack draws the base on ball. Let's see, now, um, yesterday you walked twice. So he's had three walks, two days, only three walks in the series. Two no walks the first two games. Gil Hodges... We got a fly ball to left fielder Woodling in second inning. Off for one. After retiring, uh, 11 consecutive batters. Base on balls comes up to Robinson. The Yankees three. Dodgers nothing. Two gone. Robinson, of course, uh, while he'll take a fairly long lead at first base, he always does. He won't be trying to go anyplace. Dodgers behind three runs and the left-hand pitch on the mound in addition. There's a ball snuck right over the inside corner at the knees for a call strike. Low pat pitching to spots, different gates. You throw about any sort of pitch you can name. Henry holding first base. Robinson leading off, not too far. Two out. The pitch is a curve in there nicely for a call second strike. That one did tricks. That was coming down a little on the outside and shoulder high, and suddenly down she cut right in there. Nothing in two. Hodges swinging from the end. Lopat standing with the ball behind the small of his back. He's in no hurry at all. He's enjoying it. 
Checks first pitches. Strike three, swing and a screwball. That leaves on the outside. A slow, tantalizing screwball. And Hodges tried to check his swing and just time the ball, but he couldn't do it. All right, so um, at the end of uh, four innings, Mal, check me on these, please. For the Yankees, three runs are all earned, all off Newcomb in the fourth inning, and six hits the first five off Newcomb. No errors. And for the Dodgers, no runs. One hit, which was the opening double by Reese, and for Brooklyn, no errors. 3 nothing, New York, end of four. Men, Gillette Blue Blades, five for a quarter, give you more comfort per shave and far more shaves per blade because their edges are the sharpest on earth and hard enough to cut glass. Yes, no matter which you rate first, shaving comfort or shaving economy, Gillette Blue Blades are the buy for you. And remember, you enjoy extra convenience at no extra cost when you buy them in the handy Gillette dispenser, available in both 10 and 20 blade sizes. Now for the fifth inning, Tommy Henrik, Yogi Berra, the only two in the Yankee batting order that did not bat in the three-run fourth, followed by DiMaggio. Patanda Hatton, who came on, faced Rizzuto, who singled, but the fourth inning was ended when Lopat was thrown out at the plate. Hatton delivers a curve, uh, sidearm, swung on, missed for a strike. Left-hander stepped toward first, threw the ball in tight on a left-hand hitter. Nothing in one. Outfield toward right. Henrik one for two today. Two hits for 13 at bat. Curve is fouled off the end of the bat down toward third. And Frizzetti picks up the soft rolling ball, throws it out. Nothing in two. Joe looking down to the date for the moment. Henrik, slightly open stance against a left-hander. Relief pitcher Hatton delivers. Curveball hind side. Henrik, in dodging away from it, almost ducked into it. Tommy sort of grins. He had apparently judged that ball to be a fastball and was going to just sort of squat underneath it. But instead, it was a curve, and uh, Tommy had to give his head an additional bob. One and two pitches, a curve, hind side. Henrik again uh, ducking down. Two balls, two strikes. Two and two. Pitch high inside, a fastball for ball three. It's the first batter up in the fifth inning. Yankees leading three nothing. Hatton uh, leans toward third, trying to read the signs from Campanella. Now delivers 3-2, a curveball high inside, four, ball four. And Henrik draws a base on ball, which opens up matters in the fifth inning. Sam Naron, who is the boss of the Brooklyn bullpen, gets up now with his mitt in the baseball, and I see he's throwing up Jack Banner. There has not been an agate thrown down in the Yankee bullpen today behind Lopat. Barrow 0 for 2, 0 for 6 for the series. Set, bluffs the bunt and takes a fastball low outside, ball one. One and 0. Barrow looking around to see if they do want him to bunt. They don't bunt him very often. Usually they just let him swing. Outfield, toward right, deep. Hatton checks first. Pitches. Barrow sets the butt, then takes a curve outside, ball two. And obviously they had the bunt on then. Casey Stengel, who knows that uh, three runs in the uh, fifth inning uh, sound fine, but sometimes might not be enough by the time he gets to nine. He's playing for one more, which is the percentage way. Reese comes in from short, talks to Hatton. Robinson O from second. Now the second base combination, turning to their defensive positions. Batter is throwing seriously in the Brooklyn bullpen. Barra asks for time, and he calls Cusetti. He wants to be sure he's checking the sign. Barra's going to go down and ask the third base coach right now. You want me to bunt or what? 
Well, when in doubt, that's the thing to do. I mean, managers would have less uh, gray hairs if hitters at the plate, when they got confused on uh, what they were supposed to do, would go ask. A lot of hitters would just pretend uh, they're trying to bluff through. They knew what the sign was. It causes a lot of weird things to happen in games. Hatton pitches 2 nothing and Doris swings as a ground ball through on the right field for a base hit. Eric Hendrick around second base and then holds on against Hermanski's throw, which goes over to third base. And gets away from Eddie Mixes, and there's nobody backing up third base, so Hendrick comes in to third. And Barra goes in to second. Hatton never got off the mound. Pitcher Hatton never got off the mound. Now, I don't know, uh, that throw was right in the third base on the low hop, got away from Mixes. But the man at fault in this play is the pitcher who never got off pitches mound. Whenever a ball in a spot like that is hit to right field and there may be a throw to third, the first rule for a pitcher is to back up third base. And Hatton, I guess, just uh, overcome by the situation, never got off the mound. The error is charged to Eddie Nixis for letting Hermanski's good throw get past it. So it's a single, an error charged to the third baseman. But the pitcher did not back up the play. Had he backed up the play, runners would have still been at first and second. And now it's going to be a deliberate base on balls to Joe DiMaggio to pull up the board at first base. So there's a base hit into right field for Bella just now. And he goes right on to second base. The arrow charge to Mixes. Henrik is at third. DiMaggio is being purposely walked. Here comes ball four. And the bases are now loaded for New York. On a walk, a single, an error, which is not only an error of commission at third by Mixes, but a glaring error of omission by the pitcher who did not get off the mound to back up third base. In addition to right-hander batter now throwing in the book and bullpen is a small right-hander by the name of Paul Erskine, who relieved uh, quite a lot since he was brought up in the middle of the season from Fort Worth. So the Yankees are leading 3-0, and they're pressing forward now. They're trying to tap the peat patch here at Brooklyn. They've got three men on. The Brooklyn infield of necessity is up very close, and the batter is Bobby Brown, who doubled his last time to begin that three-run assault. There's a quick curve above the knees for a call strike. Brown's left hand is pretty well. Casey Stengel is quite content to have him up there. Henrik off third. He was alert enough when that throw got away from third and Hatton was not backing up to come out on over. Barrow off second, and DiMaggio off first. Hatton in a jam, delivers a curve low outside, and it is ball one. Campanella bluffed as he would throw to third. Henry ran back, but there was no throw. Mixes to third baseman, not even over to the back. They wouldn't have been close had he been there. One ball, one strike. Hatton pumping. Deals. Fastball swung on. There's a high foul. Back on the stands and out of play. And it is one ball, two strikes. The roar is for the spectator scramble. Foul ball goes back in there. One and two. The Yankees three. And threatening to add to that. The Dodgers nothing. Hatton's in a bad spot right now, and uh, he himself uh, added to it by not backing up third base, which is a rule of thumb play. Ball hit the right field with the run at first. Throw, side on ball, low outside, and Hatton slipped and fell after he stepped toward first and threw that ball. This ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Joe isn't hurt uh, physically, of course. Uh, any pitcher's spirits are bruised when he slips and falls on the mound of a big crowd picked in a World Series game. Two and two. Brown, meaning in, bent at the knees, trim figure. I feel toward right. Two-two pitch, swung on, trickled, foul outside first base. Two and two. Things moving rather slowly the time being. Yankees, three men on. Henrik at third. Barra at second. The Maggio at first. The infield up tight, hoping for a play at the plate.
Brown, choking that bat. He's trying to meet the ball. The 2-2 pitch is swung on, and he meets it. It's a line drive in the right field for a base hit, probably for an extra bag. Henrik has scored to make it 4-0. Vera comes in to make it 5-0. Amansky can't come up with the ball. DiMaggio is coming on, and are in the third base goes Brown, and three runs are in. That ball hit the right field wall, and Hamansky was having trouble trying to pick it up. And three runs come in to make it 6 nothing. We'll check for the scorers whether that's a triple all the way or whether it is a double and an error on the right fielder. It's scored as a triple. The right field wall, as Mel and I told you in the first broadcast, is the most difficult wall in the major leagues to play. It has so many angles. And that ball was bouncing around, and Hermansky couldn't come up with it. He's not used to playing right field anyhow. Playing there because Pirello's hurt. So it is 6 nothing in favor of New York. A base-cleaning triple, a line drive into the right field corner by Brown. And now Woodling at the plate. Takes a curve high inside for ball one. So all three of these runs are in. They're all to be scored as earned. These three runs are charged against Joe Hatton. Triple for Brown. The very next inning following his double. Throw. Swung on and beaten down to the big foul. Paul Minna, a big left-hander who relieves the occasion, is trotting from the Brooklyn dugout down to the bullpen. So, um, the young medical student... Bobby Brown is certainly the doctor as far as fixing up the Yankees is concerned. He's bad medicine, however, to Brooklyn. Uh, in between baseball seasons, he's still taking medicine at Tulane in New Orleans. Woodling hits a high fly ball into relatively short left center field. Snyder running in underneath the ball. Here comes his throw, and they hold Brown at third. Throw comes all the way to the plate. So out number one, Woodling, fly ball to center. Brown has turned into a one-man wrecking crew, getting all three of those runs in. Cliff Mapes is scheduled to hit, but just a moment, they're going to take him out of there, and Hank Bauer is going to bat. So Hank Bauer is coming on to hit for Mapes to get a right-handed hitter in the ball game against relief left-hander Joe Hatton. Now, Bowers officially in the game. Here is the announcement coming up over the PA. Attention, please. For New York, number 25, Hank Bauer, batting the lead. One man gone, in two remaining up. It is 6 nothing, a half a dozen for the Yankees. They can hold any part of this lead. And they've got a vice on the series. Pitch is a curve low inside. Gets away from Campanella for just a moment. Brown has to stay at third base. He didn't start. He didn't have a long lead off third and couldn't start. So it is nothing more than ball one. The ball rolled back all of 20 feet. In other words, had he taken one of those big run-ups at third, he could have uh, coasted in. But he was just standing at third, and then he made a bluff run. Then happened the pitcher got off the mound, started to the plate. So they held him up. So Hank Bauer pinch hitting. All runs earned. The error, you know, allowed an extra base to be taken. 6 nothing, favor New York. Now field toward left. Throw. Curveball swung on and beaten down foul. One and one. Foul hits him right-handed. He started in the outfield in game two. One hit. Four at bats. He and Mate sort of on a swing ship basis. That is, when injuries were such that uh, they had extra outfields and could afford to switch around. One and one pitch. Curveball too high. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. Paul Mena takes Jack Batter's place in the book and both end. So it is left-handed Mena and right-handed Erskine now warming up for Brooklyn. There's been no action in the Yankee both end. They've just been sitting back watching. Curveball swung on, hit out into right center field. Rest of the short fly ball. Hermansky comes in, makes the catch. Here comes the throw, and Brown again is held up at third base. The throw gets away from Campanella for the moment, but he recovers it. And uh, Casey Stengel, I think, wanted Brown to be sent in. But Cosetti held him up. 
Singer had even jumped to the front of the dugout, uh, importuning, imploring, come on. The throw was quite wide. He would have made it had he run, but he didn't run. So, that's the put out for the right fielder. Two men are gone, top of the fifth. Singer won every run he can get. Now we have uh, Jerry Coleman, who's played such a distinguished second base. He's had three hits so far in the series. Knocked in, what turned to be the winning run yesterday. Right hand hitter working well up on the handle of that bat. Out field around toward left. There's a ground ball hit to short. Reese juggles it and gets off of his chest. He recovers, throws to first, in time for the out. So, Reese recovers. And uh, Hatton finally gets the three out. But the Yankees came up with three more in the seventh inning. Three runs on three hits. One error, one man left. So the total score now at the end of four and a half, New York six, book to nothing. So the Yankees leading six to nothing. Ed Lopad warming up on the mound and all warmed up and ready to go as we move into the last half of the fifth inning. Here's Mel Allen, who's done such a fine job broadcasting the Yankees uh, for these recent years and uh, on these World Series broadcasts for Gillette. Mel, you still wondering about the ninth inning? Well, I, I will for the simple reason that every last half of the ninth inning has been played in this series. Yankees leading 6 to nothing. It's the last half of the fifth inning. Louis Almo leading off of the Dodgers. Flying to left field in the second. Left hand to Eddie Lopat into the windup. In comes the pitch swung on. It's a pop-up off to the left of the plate. Just in behind it. Barra under the ball. And he makes the catch and there's one away. Louis Almo fouls out to Barra. Back to the plate. Last half of the fifth inning. Six to nothing. The score favor the Yankees. The first ball game in this series in which there has been such a disparity in the score. Every game up until now has been uh, decided on a one-run basis. And now here is Roy Campanella getting a hand. He did a lot of scrambling and rambling back of that plate in the top of the fifth inning. Doing a lot of work on throws in from the outfield on a short pass ball. Eddie Lopez of Little Rock, Arkansas, pitching to Roy Campanella. Eddie's a native New Yorker being born and brought up here, but resides down Little Rock now. The left-hander study Jogi signs, starts the work, into the windup, Brown comes the left arm, the pitch, swung on, a ground ball hit wide of third, Rizzuto backs up Brown, up for the ball, fires over to Hendrick, and it's in time for the out. The scooter, scamper to his right, backed up Brown's, that ball eluded, Brown going to his left, and Phil went far to his right, feel of that ball about 20 feet off the third baseline, and tossed to Hendrick in time to get Campanella. Up comes Gene Hermansky, who struck out in the third inning. The official paid attendance today, 33,934. Lopat delivers to Gene, inside, ball one. Yesterday's attendance was 32,788. A gate take of $164,016.71. Today, 33,934 people. The pitch to Gene, swung on, fouled off, the handle of the bat at the plate. Gate receipts $167,906.37. was at the first game at the stadium. 66224 Second game, 70053 Broken into the smaller capacity, of course. Yankee 6, the Dodgers nothing. It's the last half of the fifth inning. Fourth game of the World Series. Gene with the open stance, bent slightly at the knees, awaits the pitch. Here it is. Swung on. Hits solidly into the hole between first and second. Out in the right field for a base hit. Taken on a couple of hops by Bauer. Drops the ball. Picks it up. Flips on in the second. Hermansky holds it first. The relay gets through the legs of Rizzuto. Dashing to second are Coleman and Brown, but it wasn't far enough away as Rizzuto retrieved the ball and permit Hermansky to take the chance. So we're going to have a pinch hitter, Tommy Brown. Attention, please. Paul Brooklyn, number five. Tommy Brown, batting for us. Tommy Brown, a young fella, 
Coming up to hit for Joe Hatton and Jim Turner, Yankee pitching coach, calls time, trots out to the mound to talk to Lopat as they uh, discuss the manner in which they want to pitch to Brown. He is the only native uh, citizen on the Brooklyn Ball Club, a six foot, 165 pounder, born on December the 6th. 1927, so that should make him only 21. Be 22 in uh, December. He was 16 years old when he joined the Brooklyn Ball Club, played shortstop during the war. Tom Brown, pinch hitting for Joe Hatton, right hand hitter. Hermansky, with that single to right field, a line drive between first and second on first base. That's the first hit off low patch since Reese opened the game with a double. The pitch is swung on as a looping fly ball in short right. Bauer comes in, gets under the ball, and makes the catch. Sort of a half swing. Looked as if Brown wanted to change his mind but couldn't, but still got enough uh, to drive that ball out into right where Bauer took it. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. And Red will check our five-inning totals. The Yankees, six runs, eight hits, no errors. They've had five left on. The Dodgers, no runs, two hits, one error, and three men left on. And now Carl Erskine's going to come on to do the pitching for the Dodgers. And while he walks to the mound, we pause ten seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hear the World Series exclusively on WOR, see it on WOR-TV, Channel 9, WOR and WOR-FM, New York. Joe Hatton, who came on in the fourth inning with two outs and pitched to one batter, went one and one-third innings and gave up a total of three hits and three runs. Don Newcomb went the first three and two-thirds innings, gave up five hits and three runs. So Carl Erskine comes on, a right-hander, do the pitching as we go to the sixth inning. He's a 5'10", 156-pounder from Anderson, Indiana. He's 22 years old, will be 23 on December the 13th. Eddie Lopat... Moves into the batter's box and is greeted with a round of applause. He's done a noble job for the Yankees thus far, pitching two-hit ball over the first five innings. It's six to nothing, New York, as we go to the top of the sixth. Lopan, in addition, doing some fine pitching, unloaded a double to left center in the fourth inning to drive in a run after having skied to deep center in the second inning. Erskine taking his time. Blue Jordan of the National League calling balls and strikes. The relief right-handers into the windup. In comes the pitch, and it is swung on. It's a high pop-up off the right of the plate, down toward first. Gil Hodges dashes in almost halfway to the plate, makes the catch in fair territory, three feet off the line, and there's one away. Now coming to bat is Phil Rizzuto, who's had two for three. After having had but one hit in the first three uh, games of the series, he's had two today, two singles in the first and fourth innings. Grounded a third in the third. Eddie mixes it in close in the event of the bunt. Outfield shaded toward left. Erskine's delivery swung on. It's a high foul going out of play to the left of the plate. Up over the roof and out of the ballpark. Yankees six, Dodgers nothing, sixth inning. Again, we'd like to uh, caution you that our cavalcade of sports broadcast of the World Series, brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, will come to you tomorrow one hour later than on the weekdays. 12.45 12.45 Eastern Standard Time. 1.45 tomorrow. Here's the pitch inside. And the count is one and one on the scooter. It's a fastball. Frank Rossetti coaching there at third. Bill Dickey at first. Erskine working rapidly. Delivers. Rizzuto swings and sends a drive to left center field. Almo and Snyder converge. It's Almo out there in left center near the wall. Making the catch about three feet away from the wall. At the spot where P.B. Reese's homer entered the stands yesterday, but this one did not get that much carry. So there are two down. And up to bat comes Tommy Henrik, who's had one for two in the ball game. He singled in the first inning, grounded to Hodges in the third, and walked in the fifth. Tommy started the Yankees off in the fifth inning with that base on balls that led to three runs. Brown scoring them all with a triple. Pitch is low outside for a ball. Triple to the bases loaded. 
Outfield plays Henrik to pull. He is shaded around toward right and center and right with Almo looking for Tommy perhaps to slice toward left a bit. Mix is wide of the line at third. Here's your delivery. Tommy Henrik swings and sends a drive to right field. There's Hermanski racing over to the corner. The ball is up against the wall. Bounding off to Hermanski. Henrik takes the turn but holds up quickly and has to come back to first. As Hermanski played that ball, the rebound off the wall and right in beautiful fashion. And Tommy had to hold up with a line single off the wall in right field. His second hit of the ball game, his third of the series. His first one was a payoff punch in the first game, a ninth inning homer off Newcomb to win that uh, opening game of the series. That's the Yankees' ninth hit of the ball game. Yogi Berra steps in. One out of three, single to right field in the fifth inning. Erskine takes the stretch. Hodges holds against Hendrick. The pitch to Berra right over for a call strike. Half-speed ball. One strike to count. Again, Erskine's ready. Here's his pitch. Outside, ball one. Outfield, infield set up. The same for Barra as for Henrik. One ball, one strike, two down. Henrik moves off first base. Erskine sets, throws. The pitch is swung on. It's a high pop-up around second base. Jackie Robinson calls for the ball. Shades his eyes from the sun, and he makes the catch for the out. No runs for the Yankees. One hit. No errors for the Dodgers. One left on for the Yanks. And the score at the end of five and one-half innings of play, the Yankees six, the Dodgers nothing. As Willard Marshall, hard-hitting outfielder for the New York Giants, puts it, the new Gillette Super Speed Razor is a bearcat. Yes, and here he is to nail it down. Well, fans, if you want a razor that is a razor... Take my advice and get this one-piece Gillette. It gives me the slickest shaves in the world and does it so gently that my face feels swell when I'm through. How about convenience? I can't imagine anything handier. Blade changing is no trouble. And to clean the razor, you simply rinse it. Men, see what modern shaving ease and convenience are like. Ask for the new Gillette Super Speed Razor set at your favorite store. You get a fine, precision-made Gillette razor and a 10-blade Gillette dispenser in a serviceable styrene travel case. A dollar seventy-five value for only a dollar. Last half of the sixth inning. The Brooklyn Dodgers trailing the Yankees by a score of six to nothing. Will come up at the top of the order. Reese, Mixus, and Snyder. In the first game of the World Series. The Dodgers had only two hits. The Yankees five. And in the second game, the Dodgers had seven hits. The Yankees six. And yesterday, the Yankees had five hits and the Dodgers had five hits. So the Yankee total of nine hits in this series is a series high. Not in history, but for this current classic. As we come to the last half of the sixth inning, Dodger fans are beginning to uh, call for a little action with some rhythmic applause. Pee Wee Reese, right-hand batter, on the first pitch takes inside around the belt buckle for ball one. Reese double to left center the first inning. Popped out to first in the third. There are the Dodger fans now clamoring for a little activity. The pitch is strike call over the outside corner. Lopat screwball. They play Reese to pull. Hank Bauer in right field, not too far over into right center. Brown in close at third, and as Lopat was ready to go into his windup, Reese stepped out on him. Time called. Now he's back in. Jake Pittler walking up and down, coaching at first. Once again, uh, batter and pitcher unable to get together. Reese stepped out as Lopat was ready. Now we're all set. Here's the 1-1 pitch on its way. Reese takes inside the knees for ball two. Two and one. Milton Stock coaching at third for Brooklyn. Now the 2-1 delivery on its way, and Reese swings and sends a drive into left center field. The match falls down as he starts in. He can't get to it, and the ball drops for a base hit. 
He comes up for the ball, trip, uh, flips his throw into Coleman, and races on with a pop fly single to left center. Demage breaking fast, tripped and fell. And before he could uh, get up and go, the ball had dropped for the base hit. And now you're going to have a pinch hitter for Eddie Mixis. Billy Cox coming up. Cox was injured about two months before the season ended. I said two months is on Labor Day, wasn't it, Red? Labor Day morning, and this is his uh, first appearance since that time. Red, how did he uh, injure himself? Uh, he simply was uh, running home to score a run, turned his ankle as he came around third base. Uh, early in the morning of uh, the morning game of Labor Day. And it's his first time uh, in any action, as you told him, Mel. Right-hand hitter, Billy Cox, batting for Mixus. The pitch, swung on, a little roller down in front of the plate. Could be trouble. Lopez up for the ball. Can't make a play. Billy Cox topped a pitch that rolled down toward third. Lopat came in to grab it. Barrow went out. Lopat grabbed it, but Cox was hurrying down the line, and it's a base hit. Reese goes to second, and now the Dodgers have the pot boiling here in the last of the sixth inning. Runners on first and second, nobody out, and Duke Snyder at bat. He grounded it. Billy uh, had got it in the first inning to Bobby Brown at third. Skied out in the fourth. Left-hand hitter, the pitch. Swung on and fouled off on the ground to the left of the plate. Strike one. Reese on second. Cox on first. Snyder the batter. Robinson on deck. Nobody out. Last of the sixth inning. Yank six. Dodgers nothing. And the Duke up. Low pass studies, Yogi sign. Outfield about straight away for Snyder. Low pass studies the sign intently. Nye has his stretch. Reese off second. Cox off first. Here's the pitch. Curve swung on. Foul tip. Strike two. He had Duke going for that changeup. Slow curve. In 1947, we had uh, several occasions on which outfielders fell down. And again, we've had it in uh, this series. Trying to make those sharp cuts. Low patch stretches. Runners move away from first and second the pitch. And Snyder takes outside for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Bill Rizzuto is over close to second base and then halfway. Bobby Brown near the third baseline is about five to six feet off the line and about halfway back on the skin part of the infield. Big shot between third and short. Jerry Coleman in a step or so halfway between first and second. Henrik deep near the line. The stretch. Reese off second. Cox off first. Here's the pitch. And Snyder swings and sends a ground ball out to Rizzuto. He's up with it. Steps on second himself. Fires to Henrik. A double play. Going to third is Reese. Duke Snyder rammed one right at the scooter. Had him uh, pegged uh, perfectly insofar as placement was concerned. Grabbed Duke's hot bounder, stepped on second uh, to force Cox and fired on over to Henrik to double up Snyder. That's the Yankees' fourth double play of the series. And now coming to bat is Jackie Robinson. Snyder, like DiMaggio, two of the big guns in the two uh, teams' attacks, both have been uh, stymied in this series. Robin Snyder's had one hit and DiMaggio one hit. And now here's Jackie Robinson. Right hand batter the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Reese on third. Moving to third on the double play. Last sixth inning. Six to nothing New York. Billy Cox has gone down to the Dodger bullpen to loosen up his arm. He'll go in to play third when we go to the seventh inning. Robinson grounded short and walked. National League's leading hitter this year. 
Takes a curve to outside. Ball one, one and one. Big gap in the outfield is in right center. DiMaggio and Woodling looking for Robinson to pull. Bauer not too far into right center. Looking for Jackie to slice toward right. Infield shaded around toward third. Jerry Coleman about two strides to the right of second. Here's your pitch. Robinson swings and lines it out in the left field for a base hit to score Reese. Taken on two hops by Woodling. There's a throw into Coleman, and it's a 6-1 to one ball game. Jackie Robinson with a solid line drive to left field to score Reese from third. It's now Yankees 6, Dodgers 1, and up comes Gil Hodges, who flied to left field and struck out. Right-hand batter, Louis Almos on deck. Dodgers scoring their first run of the ball game. Gill, big, tall, rangy, powerful boy. On the first pitch, swings and fouls it off the plate. Gets in between the legs of Barra. Strike one. They play Hodges almost the same way in the outfield as they do Jackie Robinson. Tommy Hendrick holding against Robbie. Who with two out and his team five runs behind may not be attempting to affect the steal of second. In a tight ball game, a close one, that might be the order of the day. But then there are always exceptions to the rules, so we'll watch him. Lopat studies Yogi sign. Has his stretch. Robinson with a little short lead. Here's the pitch. Swung on a bouncer hit right back through the middle out over second in the center. Robinson around second on his way to third to match up the ball. Throws to third, but it is not in time. Robinson goes into third, holding first is Hodges. And the Dodgers have runners on first and third. And Louis Almo coming to bat. So the Dodgers come alive here in the sixth inning with four hits. Two of them solidly belted. And Louis Almo coming up with Roy Campanella on deck. One run in, two down. Robinson on third. Hodges on first. Henrik goes over to the mound to say something to Lopat. Vic Rashi gets up off the Yankee bench not to go warm up, but just to shift his position as we take a look down there. Ball players sitting on a bench like to move about. Well, let's move over here and get into another spot. Maybe that'll change the luck. And on the Dodger bench, they're stirring around. So Louis almost steps in. Right-hand hitter. Robinson on third. Hodges on first. Two down. One run in. Last to six. Lopat takes his stretch. Here's the delivery. It's strike call over the outside corner. Gave him the screwball. The outfield for Almo, shaded toward right, in center and right. Woodling looking for Almo to pull, but not too sharply. Almo pulled one very sharply yesterday. He occasionally does, but for the most part, will hit toward left center and around that way a bit. Now there's the uh, signal by Jim Turner, Yankee uh, coach, to the bullpen for some action. And Lopat delivers. Almo swings and sends a ground ball right back through the middle. Rizzuto keeps in it. Robinson scores. Hodges runs second on his way to third. The Magic throw is into second, and the Dodgers have two runs in. ball game. The Dodgers have come up with five hits in the sixth inning and now Casey Stengel comes out of the Yankee dugout walking to the mound to talk to Lopat. And Allie Reynolds begins to deliver in the Yankee bullpen. Vic Rashi gets his jacket and when I said a moment ago that Rashi was getting up off the bench and shifting his position he shifted more than we had anticipated at that point. He is going down to the bullpen. Stengel talking to Lopat. Now he leaves him. He's going to let him stay on in there. You got Roy Campanella coming up. 
After the double play, three consecutive singles by Robinson, Hodges, and Olmo. And two runs are in. It's a 6-2 to two ball game. Two men are on. And Roy Campanella, who bounced out to low pad and grounded it short, is up at the plate. A right-hand hitter. Hodges on third. Olmo on first. Outfield around toward left. And the Dodger fans are now up in arms. Eddie Lopez for the stretch. Here's the pitch. Campanella swings and lines one up the left field for a base hit. In comes Hodges to score. Holding it second is almost a throw. Goes into third. That's going to be all for Lopez. contingent, and the Dodger Rooters have something to cheer about. Lopez is going to stay on in there, though, with Gene Hermansky, a left-hand hitter coming up. Reynolds actually hasn't had too much time to get ready. He just started warming up a moment or so ago, so he's not really warm. And here's Gene Hermansky, who struck out in single to right, with Almo on second, Campanella on first, three runs in, here's the pitch, Swung on and fouled off to the left of the plate, strike one. The Dodgers are back into the ball game at six to three. Casey Stengel comes to the front of the Yankee dugout, hollers something out to Lopez, and the crowd has come alive. It being a predominantly Brooklyn crowd, of course. The game's being played at Ebbets Field. Coming alive too, the Dodger bullpen with a left-hander and a right-hander throwing. Bata and Minner. Almo on second, Campanella on first. Four consecutive singles here by the Dodgers after two are out and a runner on. Six hits on all in this inning. Low pass to the stretch. Runners move away from first and second. Here's the pitch. It is way outside for a ball. Ball games have a way of reversing themselves with lightning-like rapidity. All right, Almo off second. Campanella off first with a big lead. The stretch by Lopez, the pitch. Swung on, lined to right field for a base hit. Here comes Almo around third. He comes in to score. The throw goes to second. Campanella goes to third. And out comes Stengel. Six to four ball game. Five consecutive singles after two are out, and the Dodgers are right back in it. Six to four, with Allie Reynolds coming out of the Yankee bullpen to take over for Eddie Lopez. The Lopez, who pitched two hit ball for five innings. And who got two out in the sixth inning, unable to get to the next one. He went five and two thirds innings. Gave up seven hits here in the sixth, nine all told in the ball game. Five in a row. And has allowed four runs and is responsible for the two men are on base. And Carl Perillo, who had started out of the dugout to pinch hit, has gone back in. Looks like Spider Jorgensen, a left-hand hitter, is going to come out to do the pinch hitting. So it's a big inning for the Dodgers. And Jorgensen is going to hit for Erskine. As Allie Reynolds comes on to take over for the Yankees. Allie Reynolds, who pitched the one nothing shutout for New York in the opener of the series against Don Newcomb, coming on in relief. And while he takes a few warm-up pitches, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. 
Hear the World Series exclusively on WOR. See it on WOR TV Channel 9. WOR and WOR FM, New York. Red's been checking the record book for us, and in the event you might have been wondering whether or not these five consecutive hits by the Dodgers so far in the sixth inning is a record. And, uh, Red, what have you found? Well, I find that uh, it's not a record now. The most consecutive hits in an inning are eight. The Giants in the seventh inning in uh, 1921 on the 7th of October made uh, eight in a row. The most hits in an inning... Ten, the Athletics in the seventh inning on October 12, 1929, made ten in one inning. Well, the joint's jumping, Mel, so you better try and calm it down. Spider Jorgensen, the left-hand hitter, comes in to bat for Erskine. Campanella on third. Hermansky with his second straight hit on first. Four runs in. Six to four the score. Favor the Yankees. Allie Reynolds ready to pitch the left-hand batter. Throws, and it's over for a call strike. Fastball. On deck is Pee Wee Reese. Jorgensen is the ninth man to come to bat in this inning for Brooklyn. And so, as we hinted earlier in the game, both Red and I, the fourth games of World Series play between the Yanks and Dodgers are generally productive of something that borders on the spectacular. And here are the Dodgers, who were behind 6-0. Now in there, 6-4 in the pitch, and Jorgensen swings and fouls it off at the left of the plate, and it's out of play. Strike two. Thirty-odd thousand who are out here all up in arms, regardless of what their uh, partisanship may be. They're rooting one way and then the other. But they're all hollering. All right, Allie Reynolds. Now looks and gets the sign from Yogi. Campanella is on third. Hermansky is on first. Reynolds with a stretch. Jorgensen the batter. And the pitch. It's strike three, call a fastball right through there at the letters, and Jorgensen argues with plate umpire Lou Jorda, and then slings his bat away, and then he stops and turns, and goes back toward Jorda, and then turns, and remembering the edict of the commissioner of baseball, A.B. Chandler, starts to go back to the dugout, then he comes back up to Jorda, and now he's going away again. At the end of six innings... It is New York, six runs, nine hits, no errors, six left on. Brooklyn, four runs, nine hits, one error, and five men left on. Ralph Branca, who pitched such beautiful ball yesterday to the ninth inning, is in the bullpen now for Brooklyn. This is a big ball game for both teams. The Dodgers need it to stay right in there. The Yankees uh, need it to keep the jump. It also, the Dodger rally has forced Casey Stengel to bring in his start of that first game. Here's Joe DiMaggio. Swings and fouls it back. Strike one. As Jack Banta, long, lean right-hander, has come on in relief. Erskine was removed for a pinch hitter. We're in the seventh inning. Yankees six. Dodgers four. The right-hander throws. DiMaggio swings and misses. A curveball. Strike two. Joe has walked twice in this ball game and drove to deep left center in the fourth inning. A ball that uh, came close to being all the way, but not quite. Two-strike count on Joe. Right-hander banner throws. Swung on. Little nub grounder hit out towards second. Jackie Robinson charges it up with it. Throws to Hodges. DiMaggio's out at first. One up and one away for New York in the seventh inning. And here's Bobby Brown, who walked, doubled, and tripled. Tripled with the bases loaded in the fifth inning. He scored in the fourth with his one-out double on a double by Mapes. Bobby Brown has had an amazing series batting average. Banta delivers to Bobby. High, ball one. In 1947, Brown had three for three in the series. Pinch hits. 
And so far, he's had three hits in this series. So he's had six hits and ten times at bat. He swings and misses. Strike one. He has a 600 batting average for World Series play. One ball, one strike, one out. Seventh inning. New York six, Brooklyn four. Gene Woodling on deck. Jack Bound into the windup. In comes the pitch. Curve swung on. A ground ball hit right to Robinson. He's up with it. Throws over to Hodges. Two away. Two up and two down. And now here's Gene Woodling. Who flied to center, walked, and flied to center. Jack Banta, a six foot two, 165 pounder from Hutchinson, Kansas. 26 years of age. Done some fine relief work for the Dodgers this year. Delivers to Gene outside, ball one. Sometimes in a game like this where one team gets off to a commanding lead and then uh, suddenly sees it slipping away, you have a spectacle of one team slipping and the other one coming. Here's your delivery. And it's in there at the knees for a call strike. The one team has lost its momentum, and the other one is gaining. And then the question becomes, how far will the one meet the other? And will they pass or not? The 1-1 delivery. Breaking ball just outside, ball two, very close. Two balls, one strike. Yankees six, Brooklyn four, seventh inning. You have seen in this series the very factors that drove both of these teams to thrilling finishes and wins in their respective leagues. That is, indomitable fortitude. They both have all the courage in the world. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on, a ground ball hit right to Jackie Robinson. He's up with it. Throws to Hodges. The inning is over. No hits, no errors, nobody left on. And the score at the end of six and a half innings, Yankees six, Brooklyn four. You know, when Willard Marshall of the New York Giants fanned with you earlier about the Gillette Super Speed Razor, he mentioned how gently it shaves. Yes, gently is the word for it, folks. Every stroke is light and gentle. There's no drag, no pull, no smart, no burn. You just skim the whiskers off and... When you're through, your face looks its best and feels great. This is a precision instrument. It can't jam, can't clog, and there's nothing to take apart or put together. For shaving ease and convenience worth talking about, ask for the new Gillette Super Speed Razor Set. You got a fine, easy shaving Gillette one-piece razor, a Gillette dispenser loaded with ten factory-sharp Gillette blue blades, and an attractive, serviceable styrene travel case. All in all, a big dollar seventy-five value for only a dollar. Last half of the seventh inning, and it's going to be the top of the order for the Dodgers. Nine men batted in the four-run sixth inning. It was all started off by Pee Wee Reese, and he's coming up again. He's had two out of three today, a double in the first inning, single in the sixth, popped out to first in the third inning. Cox and Snyder to follow. Reynolds delivers. Reese on a curve. Swings and drives it to right center field. Bauer races over and back and takes it for the out. Reese lines to right center with Hank Bauer racing over to take it. And now you've got Billy Cox coming up. He batted for Mixus in the sixth inning and beat out a roller. Brown and Barra at the mound now talking to Reynolds. Both bullpens for the time being inactive. Duke Snyder is on deck. Casey Stengel comes to the front of the Yankee dugout and hollers out to Reynolds. And he tells uh, tells him to tell Hank Bauer to move over toward the right field line more for this right-hand hitter. The pitch, low inside, ball one. Yankee six, Dodgers four. Last the seventh inning, one out, nobody on. Billy Cox from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Awaits the pitch. Here it is. Outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes.
The outfield set up for Cox now straight away. Brown in close at third, three, four feet off third baseline. Rizzuto in a couple of steps at short. In comes the pitch. Swung on. It's a high pop-up going out of play. Foul back of third. Up onto the roof. Folks in the upper deck back of third were waiting for it to come down so they could scramble for the souvenir, but it stayed up onto the roof. Two balls, one strike to count on Billy Cox. Duke Snyder on deck. Yankees got three runs in the fourth inning, three in the fifth. The Dodgers slashed back with four in the sixth, and it's a six to four ball game to present time. Last half of the seventh inning. The two one delivery. Swung on. There's a drive to center field. DiMaggio getting onto that one, and he hauls it in for the out. Two away. Two up, two down. And Duke Snyder steps in. Grounded to third, sky to uh, right center, and bounced into the double play in the sixth inning. Powerful left-hand hitter. Compton, California, Clowder. Right-hander Allie Reynolds comes in with curve. Swung on it, missed. Strike one. And Duke was going all the way. He was trying to belt one out into Bedford Avenue, which is back of right field. Outfield set up. Almost straight away. Shaded slightly toward right. Brown in close at third. In comes the pitch. Low fastball. Count evened up at one and one. Jackie Robinson's on deck. Phil Rizzuto, two strides to the left of second. He's way over. Jerry Coleman deep at a point almost halfway between first and second. And Tommy Hendrick very deep and about two, three feet off the first baseline. And Allie Reynolds into the windup. Around comes the right arm. The pitch is swung on. Foul back to the screen. Strike two. One and two. Reynolds with a new ball to work with. Getting set. A lot of room between Brown and Rizzuto. Brown is backed up at third. He's near the line. Rizzuto over near second. In comes the pitch, and it is swung on him. Missed strike three. Went down swinging on a low fastball. No runs for the Dodgers. No hits. No Yankee errors. And nobody left on for Brooklyn. And the score, at the end of seven innings, the Yankees six runs, nine hits, no errors. Six left on. The Dodgers four runs, nine hits, one error, and five men left on base. And so, there have been... Uh, couple innings of concentrated action as the Dodgers have battled their way right back into the ball game. And they did it with a vengeance, didn't they, Red? Well, um, nothing is as uncertain as a baseball game, and certainly not apparently uh, at Ebbets Field, game four between the Yankees and the Dodgers. The only thing sure is that uh, we've got a nice afternoon from the weather. And what will come up in the eighth and ninth innings, I know for one, I wouldn't miss seeing it. I think you folks listening in are mighty fortunate to have Mel telling you about it. Going into the first half of the eighth inning, the Yankees will come up with Hank Bauer, Jerry Coleman, and Allie Reynolds. Casey Stengel sent Bauer in to hit for Mapes in the fifth inning, and the left-hander in there doing the pitching at that time for Brooklyn and runner on third hoping to get him home. It didn't happen. Band of pitches. Bauer swings and sends a ground ball out through the middle almost. Reese goes to his left up with it. Flips to first in time for the out. Ball wasn't hard. Hit quite hard enough to go right on through. Gave Reese a chance to scamper to his left. Come up with it. And he makes the put out at first. And with one away, here's Jerry Coleman who fouled out in the second inning to Roy Campanella. Fouled out in the fourth inning to left fielder Louis Almo, who came across the foul line to take his fly ball, and he grounded out to short in the fifth. Chokes that bat, leans in close to the plate. The pitch is a fastball just off the outside corner, ball one. Allie Reynolds, the next scheduled hitter. Rizzuto is out in the batter circle. Outfield about straight away. One man down, and the pitch. Swung on, say. Fly ball hit out into short right. Gene Hermansky in under it, and he makes the catch. So they're two down for the Yankees in the eighth inning. And Allie Reynolds coming out of the dugout. Allie had a couple of hits in the uh, first game of the series that he worked. One of them a double. 
One a single. Struck out his last time up in the first game. Bats him right-handed. Two men down, eighth inning, score. Yankees six, Dodgers four. Banner delivers, and it's inside, a little high. Ball one, one ball, no strikes. A shade uh, Reynolds, bit toward left. The delivery, swung on, it's hit high into the air. Behind the plate, foul pop-up, Campanella under it, and he makes the catch. So the Yankees go out in order for the second straight inning as Banta does a perfect job of relief pitching. And the score at the end of seven and a half innings remains the Yankees six, the Dodgers four. You know, back in the days when it took nine balls to walk a batter, four strikes to fan him, and fouls didn't count, shaving was no picnic. But now, thanks to Gillette Blue Blades, You ease off whiskers in a jiffy and wind up with your face looking its best and feeling great. Men, Gillette Blue Blades, five for a quarter, are the sweetest shaving and longest lasting on earth. So for tops in comfort and economy as well, they're the buy for you. Now, to enjoy extra convenience without extra cost, ask for Gillette Blue Blades and the handy Gillette dispenser. It feeds them out unwrapped, Saves time, saves fuss. You get 20 blades, 40 shaving edges for 98 cents. 10 blades for 49 cents. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever honed. The last half of the eighth inning at Ebbets Field, it'll be Jackie Robinson, Gil Hodges, and Louis Almo coming up. Score, Yankees six, Dodgers four. Robinson grounded a short, walked and single to left in the sixth inning. Right-hand batter. Outfield toward left and center to left. Almost straight away in right. The big gap in right center. Second baseman Jerry Coleman over near the bag. Brown in close at third. In comes the pitch from Reynolds, and it's over for a call strike. Fastball. Rizzuto about four strides to the left of second in a couple of steps. Robinson fast. He may be bunting. He may be swinging away. You can never tell. He'll try to catch you napping and dump a bunt on occasion. The one-strike pitch. And Robinson takes low outside for the ball. One and one. Breaking delivery. Jake Pittler, ever active, coaching there at first. Cups his hands over his mouth. Hollers words of encouragement down the plate to Robinson. Milton Stock standing there at third. Randall starts the windup. Around comes the right arm. In comes the pitch. Robinson takes just over the outside corner for call strike two. One ball, two strikes. Bobby Brown backs up at third now with two strikes on Jackie, and he's about three feet off the line. Rizzuto over toward that third base hole. Coleman over near second. Reynolds delivers. Curve is inside to Robinson. Ball two, two, two. Fans exercising their prerogative. Always trying to help the umpires umpire the game. Two balls, two strikes. Robinson leading off last the eighth inning. Allie Reynolds delivers. Jackie Robinson swings and sends a ground ball toward third. Brownders left up with it. Fires across to Henrik in time and there's one away. Robinson grounds out, Brown to Henrik. Here's Gil Hodges, Brooklyn first baseman, moving into hitting position, fly to left in the second inning, struck out on the fourth, and single to center in the sixth. Outfield, shades around toward left for Big Gil. Boy from Petersburg, Indiana. Bobby Brown moves in close at third now near the line. Allie Reynolds delivers. Fastball swung on. Ground out to short. Rizzuto grabs it on two hops. Flips over to Henrik in time and they're two away. Hodges going after that first pitch. Hit it solidly but right at Rizzuto. Two up and two down. And now coming to bat is Louis Almo who fly to left, fouled out to Barron, and single to center. Seven big base hits in that sixth inning for Brooklyn to put the right smack back into the ball game. Four runs coming in. 
cutting down the Yankees' 6 nothing lead built up in the fourth and fifth innings. Off Newcomb, Manhattan. Reynolds in relief of Eddie Lopat. Getting set to pitch to Almo. Louis had stepped in. He steps out to get a little dirt in his hands. Now he's back in. Slightly open stance in close to the plate. Holds the bat down down the handle. Reynolds comes in with a pitch. A curve and it's high. Ball one. Bobby Brown is not in close at third of the two down. Not figuring Almo to be bunting. Not too deep. But not too close. The Yankee right-hander throws. The pitch is strike call. Fastball. Got the outside corner just at the knees. One ball, one strike. Reynolds primarily a fastball pitcher with a good snapping curve. Occasionally he uses his slow curve. Now the 1-1 delivery. Overhand fastball is inside. Backs all more away. 2-1 the count. Jim Turner, Yankee pitching coach, told me that Allie Reynolds, though it hasn't been publicized too much, has one of the best fastballs in the major leagues. It's always very alive. Now the 2-1 pitch. It's high and inside. Ball three, another fastball. Three and one the count. You got Roy Campanella on deck. And of course you got a ball game close enough so that in the event a Dodger gets on, that puts the tying run at the plate. The fans quite aware of it. Three balls, one strike. Reynolds going to work on Almo and the pitch. Right in there for a call strike two. Just fired a fast one through the middle. Figuring Almo to be taking two down, two runs behind, eighth inning. So you got a full count on the batter. Three and two. Reynolds ready. Starts the wind up. Around comes the right arm. The payoff pitch is strike three. Call over the outside corner. How about that? No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And the score at the end of eight innings, Yankee six, Brooklyn four. Yankee six runs, nine hits, no errors. Six left on, Brooklyn four runs, nine hits, one error, and five men left on base. And as you go to the ninth inning, the Yankees will come up at the top of the order, Rizzuto, Henrik, and Barra, while in the last of the ninth, scheduled to hit for Brooklyn, Campanella, Hermansky, and a pinch hitter, of course, for Banta, unless uh, something might happen to two hitters before that in the way of tying up the ball game, in which case Banta would probably go up and hit for himself. One thing, though, it's definitely certain. When you sail through tough whiskers with a world-famous Gillette Tech Razor, you enjoy a sense of comfort and well-being that's worth talking about. The Gillette Tech smooths your skin and sets up your whiskers as a barber would. See how easy shaving can be. Ask for the Gillette Tech Razor, complete with five Gillette Blue Blades at the popular pre-war price of only 49 cents. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hear the World Series exclusively on WOR. See it on WOR TV Channel 9. WOR and WOR FM New York. Bill Rizzuto takes a pitch that's low for ball one as we go to the top of the ninth inning. Yankees six, Dodgers four. Billy Cox in there, third base in close. Jack Banner delivers. Outside. Ball two. Ralph Branca throwing in the bullpen for Brooklyn. No action in the Yankee bullpen. Rizzuto's had two out of four singles in the first and fourth innings. Grounded out the third in the third. Flied to left in the sixth. Outfield around toward left. Banner's pitch. Inside. Backs fell away for ball three. 3 nothing count on the scooter. Now that Allie Reynolds has had to come in today, it's difficult to predict what the pitching selections will be for tomorrow. In comes your delivery, and it's inside. Phil almost hit him. That uh, 3 nothing pitch was way inside. And Rizzuto walks.
That's the first man to reach base on Banta since he came on in the seventh inning in relief. Vic Grash, who pitched the second game of the series, could be a Yankee pitching selection. He'd have to come back in the fifth game with but two days rest, as Newcomb did today. Fred Sanford could be a starter, though uh, Casey Stengel might think twice. He could come back to Tommy Byrne, who didn't go very far yesterday. Here's Tommy Henrik. As a throw to first base, not in time. Henrik singled in the first inning, grounded in the third to Hodges, walked in the fifth, and singled in the sixth. Tommy steps out. Banner was ready to work. All signs at the moment would point to a possibility of Rex Barney starting for Brooklyn tomorrow. Banner delivers to Henrik. Tommy shortens up, takes the ball. Hodges breaking for the plate, looking for the bunt. Cox from third. Since Joe Hatton was used today in relief, and with Branca throwing the bullpen, having worked just yesterday, it's entirely possible that regardless of the outcome of today's game, it would be Barney for Brooklyn tomorrow. Banner all set. Throws. Henrik swings and sends a ground ball through first out into right field for a base hit. Rizzuto around second on his way to third. Up the ball is Ferrillo. Here's the throw. It is not in time. Or rather, Hermansky, excuse me. And Rizzuto gets into third. So Tommy Henrik singles into right field. Sending Phil Rizzuto to third base. That's Henrik's third hit of the ball game. His fourth in the series. His first one, of course, will long be remembered when you talk about World Series games. Dramatic inning opening, last half of the ninth inning, home run that won the ball game. One to nothing for Reynolds over Newcomb at the Yankee Stadium. Now here's Barrow, who's had one out of four. The infield is in for play at the plate. Rizzuto on third, Henrik on first. Ninth inning, 6-4 New York. Nobody out. The pitch, Barrows golfs a foul. Grounder down the first baseline. Strike one. You had a similar situation in the first inning today when Rizzuto and Henrik single to start the ball game, putting runners on first and third, and Barra hit into a strange double play. Grounding to third, Rizzuto was caught in a chase and put out, and Henrik, rounding second, was caught to uh, complete the double play, and the Yankees failed to score. So there were two bases on balls following. Here's your pitch to Yogi. It's a pitch out. A throw down to third, and he is out of third. Rizzuto is caught at third as he stumbled trying to get back. How about that? Again, you have a strange situation developing, just as you had in the first inning. Roy Campanella was taking a look at Phil coming up the line. Cox eased over, and Campanella called for that pitch out and fired down to Cox, and Rizzuto stumbled trying to get back, and he couldn't make it as Cox blocked him off. So there's one out. Henrik on first, and the pitch to Barra is way outside for ball two. Yes, sir, this fourth game has been productive of a lot of surprises. And it's not over. Two balls, one strike, one out. Rizzuto picked off third by Roy Campanella. Henrik inches off first. Banda delivers to Barra. Inside. Ball three, three and one. Man, you know, that relieves the pitcher of a lot of pressure. Runners on first and third, nobody out. A uh, difference working that way, and the man on first and one out. Branca and Minna, a right-hander and left-hander, throwing the Brooklyn bullpen. Ready for that 3-1 pitch. Here it is. Barra swings and sends a drive to right field. Hermansky going over toward the line under it, makes the catch for the out. Henrik halfway to second, comes back to first. So now you can see the importance of that Campanella play at third because Rizzuto could have tagged up and scored after the catch, and that would have made it necessary for the Dodgers to... Uh, get four runs in the last of the ninth inning to win where now they need three. So they're two away and the batter is Joe DiMaggio who walked, skied to center, was intentionally passed and grounded to second. Joe's had but one hit in the series. That was a top roller that he beat out. 
Jack Banner stretches, pitches, demands, swings, and lines one foul down the third baseline. Strike one. As far as line drives are concerned, that's the most solid one that DiMaggio has belted in this series. It was foul. He had a long drive in the fourth inning, just short of a homer in the left center. One strike to count on the Clipper. Two down, ninth inning, Yankees six, Dodgers four. Outfield around toward left, infield shaded well around toward third, though Robinson not too close to second for Joe. Jack Banner stretches, pitches, demands. There's a pitch out, a throw down to first base. Henrik just back in in time. Boy, that Campanella really does a job behind that plate. Always working with his pitchers, trying to help him out. He's been doing a lot of throwing in this series, and it paid off today. One ball, one strike. Banner ready. And the pitch. Demage takes strike two. Call over the outside corner above the knees. Low fastball. One and two the count on Joe. Bobby Brown on deck will be the next batter in the event DiMaggio gets aboard. It's a six to four ball game. The Yankees out in front. Ninth inning, two down. Henrik on first. Jack Banner sets. Now look at first. Here's the pitch. DiMaggio swings and misses. Strike three. So the Yankees fail to score. So they had runners on first and third and nobody out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on. And we come to the last half of the ninth inning. And every last half of the ninth inning has been played in this series. The Yankees, the home team, won the first game, but they had to do it in the last of the ninth. Then the Yankees lost the second game. And the scene shifted to Ebbets Field yesterday, and the Dodgers lost that one and had to take their turn at bat the ninth. And here they are again coming up in the last of the ninth with Roy Campanella leading off. Gene Hermansky to follow. And after Hermansky, we'll see. Let me caution you once again that the Gillette Safety Razor Company will bring you the World Series again tomorrow, but an hour later than we have been coming on the air due to a Sunday law in the state of New York. No game can start until five minutes past two Eastern Standard Time. And so we will be on the air at 1.45 Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So please remember that. Now, here's Roy Campanella, the right-hand hitter, leading off last of the ninth inning, 6-4 to four New York. Allie Reynolds delivers. Swung on, hits sharply to third, up with it on one hop is Brown. Fires across to Henrik in time, and there's one away. That was a solid belt on a short hop to Brown that Bobby had a little trouble with momentarily, but held on to it and retired Campanella with his throw to Henrik. Now, here's Gene Hermansky. Struck out, singled in the fifth and sixth innings. Two out of three. Campanella has had one hit in the sixth inning, one out of four. Gene digs in. Outfield around toward right. Allie Reynolds goes to work. In comes the pitch to the left-hand batter. Hermansky takes inside around the belt. Ball one. Bobby Brown's in close at third. In the event of a top roller, down that way or a bunt. Joe Page starts to go to work in the Yankee bullpen. Rizzuto, two strides to the left of second, in halfway. Allie Reynolds delivers. Hermansky swings and fouls it back. Strike one, one and one. Bruce Edwards has been called down from the Dodger bullpen to come up and swing for Jack Banta. One ball, one strike, one out. Last of the ninth inning. Yankees six, Dodgers four. It's Dean Hermansky digging in. Allie Reynolds with a new ball to deliver. Gets his sign from Yogi Berra. The outfield around toward right. Page warming up from the Yankee bullpen. And now the Chief from Oklahoma City is into the windup. In comes the pitch. It is swung on and missed. Strike two, and the count is one and two. Reynolds hitches up his trousers, rubs up the cover of the ball. Jake Pittler hollers down from his first base coach's box. Come on, Gene. Gene grips that bat very tightly. Reynolds starts the wind-up. In comes the 1-2 pitch, and Hermansky takes into the dirt. Ball skips in behind Barra onto the backstop to the screen. It's a 2-2 count, a breaking pitch. 
A 2-2 count on Hermansky. Last half of the ninth inning, fourth game of the World Series. Reynolds slams the ball into the pocket of his glove. Shakes his arm free. Now he's ready. Starts the windup. In comes the pitch, and it is way outside for ball three. Full count, three and two. Came in with a fastball that took off outside. So he's gone to the full count on Hermansky. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Last the ninth inning. Yank six, Dodgers four. Reynolds getting ready for the big payoff pitch. Into the windup. Around comes the arm. Here it is. It is swung on and missed. Strike three. And Hermansky dances out of the batter's box and slams his bat to the ground. It was a quick curveball. Fast snapping curve that had him missing. And Hermansky, so mad as he walks toward the Dodger dugout, he kicks the batter's Rosen bag. It's going to be Dick Whitman coming up to hit for batter instead of Bruce Edwards. Edwards had come down to the dugout from the bullpen. But he is not going to come up to bat. It's going to be Dick Whitman, a left-hand hitter. And now Barra steps aside from the plate and looks into the Yankee dugout to Casey Stengel to determine how they shall play Whitman. And Stengel motions to Gene Woodling to come in a bit in the left. Gene Hermansky went down, striking out. Second, uh, let's see, one, two, three... Four. Fourth strikeout for Reynolds. Here's the pitch. Low inside ball one. And Reynolds struck out nine the first game, so a total of 13 strikeouts for him in the series. Six to four Yankees. Last of the ninth inning. Two down. Dick Whitman, left hand hitter batting for Jack Banta. 5'11, 170 pounder. Reynolds throws a pitch over for a call strike. One and one. Whitman from Eugene, Oregon. Outfield toward right and center and right. Shallow and left and straight away. Brown in close at third. Rizzuto in halfway at short. Three strides to the left of the bag. Coleman three strides to the right end of the step. Hendrick deep near the first baseline. One ball, one strike, two down. Allie Reynolds into the windup. In comes the pitch. Whitman swings and grounds it foul in behind the plate. And it's a one-two count. You've got P.B. Reese on deck. Bobby Brown moves over from third to holler words of encouragement to Reynolds as Yogi Berra moves out in front of the plate to deliver a brand-new baseball. To Alley. Incidentally, someone wired us. Want to know whether they used an American or National League ball in the series? They used the American League ball in the American League park, the National League ball in the National League park. But actually, it's the same ball, except for the uh, uh, name on it. One says American League reach, one says Falling National League. Here's the delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike three, and the ball game is over. And Allie Reynolds strikes out the last two men. His fifth in relief of Lopat. It's 14 strikeouts in the series. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. And the Yankees beat the Dodgers 6-4 to four as Allie Reynolds comes to the four in relief and retired a total of 3, 6, 9, 10 men. The last 10 men in a row after the Dodgers had blasted Lopat off the hill with a seven-hit, four-on onslaught in the sixth. So uh, that's the ball game. The Yankees win it 6-4. to four. Red will have the totals for you. And other uh, statistical information and his always keen observations on this uh, fourth game of the World Series that now sees the Yankees out in front in games 3-1. to one. It was a game, I might add, before Red uh, takes over, that developed along the lines we had uh, anticipated using uh, previous history as a precedent. And uh, it was exciting uh, all the way. We had things happening just every moment. I know that Red enjoyed it. Didn't you, Red? Quite a ball game, and it was a very human ball game, and it showed the importance of making uh, one basic mistake. There were fine individual performances, as you would expect in World Series. Uh, Bobby Brown was the offensive batting star. His double in the fourth inning began the upending of Don Newcomb, and when the fourth inning subsided, the Yankees had gotten Newcomb out of there and had made off with three runs. And then in the fifth inning, against Joe Hatton with the bases loaded and nobody out, Brown tripled, and that got in the other three runs. So uh, he was the fellow that was swinging the stick. 
And those two extra base hits in consecutive innings uh, gave him uh, a total of five bases, a run scored, and three batted in.